Welcome. Welcome. My name is Susie Andrews, and my sole responsibility today is to welcome you, to learn with and from you, and then to very briefly introduce, which I'll do now, the experts who are sharing their learning with us. And of course, familiar to many of you, I'm sure, is Dr. Yumi Kim who is the director of the art history department at Awa Women's University. Good morning, Dr. Kim, the author of many uh, articles and edited volumes, one of which you likely know in Pok Chang, uh, extraordinary, 2019-2020. Uh, it is a delight to be learning from and with Dr. Kim today. You likely also know Dr. Lee who is in the uh, curatorial department at the Liam Sang Sam Museum in Seoul. Uh, she holds a PhD from the University of Chicago. Uh, oh, I should have mentioned Dr. Kim's is from Harvard. Anywho, uh, she is joining us as well to share her expertise in um, material culture and Buddhist art. And we are so delighted to work with her. And then, perhaps familiar to some of you and perhaps new as venerable Dr. Chungak, who is, uh, who heads, who heads the um, Wangaksa Temple Museum collection with, with which we are learning today. He is the author of 15 books and 35 peer reviewed articles. And it is his generosity uh, with Dr. Kim and Dr. Lee that is allowing us to conduct this from the ground up Buddhism and East Asian religions workshop. Finally, and last only because he is first <laughs> in order of speaking, you may know as well, likely Dr. Paul Kopp from the University of Chicago. He is a specialist in Dharani for. For novice learners who are joining us today, <laughs> perhaps we can call Dharani powerful, oh, powerful speech, transformative words. Dr. Kopp is maybe shaking his head. He is a specialist in Chinese religious, intellectual, material culture in what we might call a medieval period or perhaps the Tang, 6, uh, 618 to 907 for non-specialist humans joining us. Whoever you are, I hope you feel welcomed. You are welcome here. And we're so glad you made time this morning, this afternoon, this evening, or perhaps even the middle of the night to be together at this uh, frog bear gathering. We look forward to working with you online today and soon, I hope, again together. So having welcomed you and ready to learn with you, I hope you might briefly join me in an awkward welcome of our experts, uh, the first of whom is Dr. Kopp, who will speak with you about thinking about working with objects and manuscripts. I'll just applaud on your behalf. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> um, can you hear me? Okay. Let me, I am going to uh, share my screen. Let me just say I was, I was in no way shaking my head. It's not shaking my head <laughs> about any of that. Thank you very much uh, for the introduction. It's very early here in Chicago. Uh, maybe it's early where you are, could be even earlier. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here is not exactly a lecture, um, but I'm gonna ask some questions just very briefly, just to kind of get us going. Um, some questions from my own perspective. Oh, first, can, can everybody see the, the PowerPoint here? Thinking about working with objects, okay. Um, also, because it's so early, I'm not in my usual uh, kind of scholarly redoubt here. It's my daughter's play kitchen over there. Maybe, uh, you know, we can, there's some, there's, you know, I didn't think of it. There are some objects over there. I could have, could have used those for the, for the talk here. Um, but oh, so what I'll do is ask some questions from my own kind of perspective, uh, which won't be everyone's perspective. Uh, you know, although I'm, I'm someone who more and more kind of thinks of myself as working with what they call material culture or material religion. Um, you know, I'm not, not officially trained in those disciplines, right? I'm not an art historian. I'm not an archaeologist. Uh, what am I? You know, I, I'm someone who thinks about the history of religious practice uh, and more and more looks mainly to objects uh, to, to think about the history of, of religious practice. And so my questions, um, just jumping ahead to them here, uh, 
mainly will come from, well, entirely will come from that perspective, right? You know, how were things used in ritual practice, right? How did they sort of aid or abet uh, or sort of on their own um, perform perhaps religious practices, things, questions like that. Uh, and you guys, some of you will have different perspectives and this is a workshop. This is my, my perspective on what we're doing here, right? Uh, we're all going to be helping each other, right? To learn about these things. I'm here, um, not in my own mind, right? Because I'm an expert, but because I'm a student of these things, right? I wanna learn about this stuff. So, so let me get going. Okay, so here are the four kinds of questions I will be sort of, I don't know, briefly modeling, I guess, uh, encouraging us to think about together. You'll have your own. <clears throat> One, why was the object made the way it was made? You know, as best we can tell, what can we infer from it, from kind of careful um, analysis of the object itself? What Question two is really part of that, right? What kinds of uses was it made for, right? What specific practices was it made for? Might it have been made for? Because, you know, will we, sometimes it'll be clear, I think, sometimes it won't. Uh, how do we think about these things? How do we think about these things together this, to today? Uh, what was it made of? You know, of what materials, right? And a lot of the stuff we'll be looking at today, of course, is made of paper and ink. So paper and ink, right? But I don't mean just that, I'll, I'll try to, think with you about some other ways we can think about uh, composition, right? The materials of which things were made. And then, you know, the hardest one really, in some cases, how is it actually used? What can we have clues in the object um, that can tell us about how it was actually used? So, you know, what was it perhaps made for? And then how was it actually used, right? I admit that, and in my own program project kind of explicitly, right? I'm interested in questions of reuse, right? And remaking, right? How are things kind of remade uh, in history? So I just grabbed a few um, objects from um, what we're talking about today and what's what I understand we're gonna be talking about today anyway. Uh, and so I'll just go through them kind of quickly. So what do we have here, right? We have quite obviously a scroll. Here's the back end of the scroll, right? So we have a, a print, I believe. Um, we have at the end, we have the text itself or the end of it anyway. Um, and we have the colophon. Well, I, I'm sure we'll hear a, a lot about these kind of, about the, the details of all this. I'm not gonna go into it I, um, right now. What I, what I wanna draw your attention to really is the margins, right? Here, why, why is the paper so big, right? <laughs> and the text so small, right? Relative to the size of the paper. Why are there such large margins, right? Does the, can that tell us anything? about it. Um, I think a lot of you will know, you, if you work with manuscripts, say from Dunhuang or elsewhere, they, they, they tend to use the whole sheet, right? Why isn't the whole sheet used here? Can we know? I mean, but was there perhaps a use in mind, right? Why was it made this way? For what possible uses? We have another one, um, another object, right? Which might offer some clues, I don't know. Uh, you know, again, these are not objects I know well, so I'm a little bit out in a limb here using them for my, uh, using them for my, my questions here, but, uh, you know, corrections will come. Uh, so here we have on, on our viewers left, right, not a different one, of course, but we have similar wide margins, and in these margins we have text, right? Was the text put in there originally? Was it put there later? I don't know, we're going to find out. But how can that help us to possibly understand questions of use, right? Were there certain kinds of reading practices, right, involved here um, that weren't at least sort of anticipated, right, with, with say Dunhuang manuscripts, right, where they, again, they use the whole paper um, and there's not a lot of room for, for, you know, ancillary kinds of texts, whatever these ancillary texts are. Um, how is it actually used? You know, perhaps we have, well, we have, a, on, again, keeping to the, uh, the image on our left, we have a seal, the remnants of an impression of a seal, right? What was that seal? If it was a, if it were, if it was a Dunhuang manuscript, I would anticipate that that could have been the monastic seal, right? The collection seal. Um, is that what this is? I don't know. We'll find out. What's the seal doing there, right? 
How, what can the seal tell us about actual use? And what can it tell us also, can it kind of encourage us to think of, about what use was, right? I mean, so there's reading practices, right? There's also uh, collection practices, right? The ways that this was kept, kinds of, and what else was involved with collection practices, right? Um, you know, there's a whole world that I'm not really prepared to, to speak to there, but it, it strikes me on the flies I'm thinking here, kind of interesting, right? What about collection practices, right? To what extent were these objects made to be collected, right? And then how do the collectors, the, the monastery, I'm assuming, um, the, the, the monastic um, officials, or perhaps, it, perhaps this wasn't a monastic seal at all. Perhaps it's an official seal um, of, of, of state. What would that tell us, right? What would that tell us about Again, questions of use, questions of regulation of use, etc. cetera. Um, kind of zooming in a little bit, um, we have comments in the text itself, right? Again, were those, when were those added, right? Why were they added? What did they do? What were people doing with them, right? What can that tell us about practices, reading practices, right? We, was it or they're, I mean, often what one can see in these kinds of positions internal to the text, that is, um, pronunciation guides, um, reading guides of other kinds, right? Comments of various kinds, right? When we find the details, I mean, here again, I'm just kind of looking at the object as a kind of formal thing, right? Um, but that can already tell us a lot, you know, even for a kind of, you know, a kind of barbarian like me, a textual scholar, right? Not a visual scholar by training, you know, we can already get a lot of information about uh, potentially, right, about, about use, right, about history, right, about practices. So there we go. Moving along, here's another one. Um, what practices was it made for, right? In what practices was it used? So these, it occurs to me now, I didn't add in some, some kind of, uh, comparative images I, I could have, but some of you will know that there were both printed and drawn talismans, right? Dharani talismans, incantation talismans of various kinds that were made as talismans, right? That is to be worn on the body or to be placed in places, in the house, in the temple, in the town, right? <clears throat> is that what this is? I don't know, we'll find out. Uh, one way that you can find, that you can guess about use is by looking at uh, what was done to the object. And here, and in, and in other cases, right, you can see folds in the paper, right? Here, I don't see folds in the paper. But again, I'm just, I just have this image, so, uh, you know, we'll be corrected, perhaps. I mean, there's a fold kind of in the bottom, but that, you know, was that a, you know, a kind of just accidental fold, or was that a real, a kind of a, a practice fold, right? Um, so was this used as an amulet, right? Was it made to be used as an amulet? That is something to be worn or placed and not looked at, right? Um, or was it made not to be folded and hidden away from sight, right? Because it's, it's sort of physicality, right, is powerful. Or was, but what, or was it made to be contemplated, right? To be looked at in some form of visual, eidetic, et cetera, contemplation. Um, Know, we will find out. But uh, again, just some kind of beginning orienting questions, right? You know, what is this thing? Um, we can answer that or think about that question on different levels. It's a text, right? It's got lots of very complex and kind of, you know, to use a technical term, cool looking text in there, right? You know, what, uh, what is it? Um, as a text, as, as layers of text, right? We have sort of readable, easily readable text um, along the margins of the circle, right? And then we have other things within, right? What is that? So that's thinking about it as a text, but what about as an object, right? What was it made for? Um, were there folds? You know, that would be a big clue. If there are not folds, you know, is that a clue or is it, you know, was it just never used? Or was it made for something else other than folding, right, and wearing? Here's another one. This is the one I'm most excited about, I have to say, because I've been working on these on seals, um, Buddhist talismanic seals lately. 
And we have um, here on the viewer's lower left, these uh, sort of talismanic uh, bits of writing, glyphs, whatever you want to call them, in boxes, right? And were this an object found, um, say, at Dunhuang, I would be confident in saying that these were meant to be seals um, and not sort of talismans, you know, examples of talismanic writing, but specifically seals. So is that the case here? We'll find out. Um, but when we think about of what materials, right? So, okay, pen, uh, not pen, but printing blocks, paper and ink, um, that's a, a a basic and extremely important level of materiality, right? If we could analyze the paper, perhaps if we could analyze the ink, we could learn a lot about that, about production, right? About sort of material production, material circulation, um, where stuff came from. But I wanna think about it, you know, in this, in a different kind of a level, right? We have, I don't know how many different sort of in images internal or bits, pieces internal to the object here. Um, you know, we'll find out how we should think about counting them, right, or if we should count them at all. Uh, but when we look here at, we take one of these seals, what I'm calling seals, might not be seals in this case, but again, um, if on our viewers left, uh, we have uh, an example, a snippet from a, a manuscript found at Dunhuang. Paleo Xinhua 3835, uh, you know, if, if some of you will know, it's this incredible little thick booklet. Um, various people are working on it, me, Amanda Goodman and others. Um, there's just tons of stuff in there, but it includes this manuscript, this text, this manual, as I think of it, for the making and use of Buddhist talismanic seals, right? And, and on the right of our viewers left here, we have a seal and I believe we have the same the same kind of seal uh, in this text, right? So that at least makes me wonder, makes me wonder about issues of components, right? That this was made up of components that could be mixed and matched, right? In various ways. That might get us thinking also materially, right? Because these things can only move materially, right? Whether in, you know, maybe it's in people's minds, but, but physically as people move across space, right? Across geography. Right, words are material too. Right, they move, um, they find, they pop up in different material contexts. Right, but here we have um, something that we have at Dunhuang and we have in in Korea. Um, you know, start thinking about issues of material circulation, a pretty vast circulation, right, Con on a continental level. Right, so what was it made for? Well, you know, we'll hear about that, I hope. How was it made? We'll hear about that, I think. What was it made of, right? So here, just quickly, we can think about that. Um, and then as soon as we're thinking of components, then we're in this world, to me anyway, of, of material circulation, right? How, how components shift, because I think what we'll find is that the sort of ritual context the ideational context is different, right? So the seal is somewhat the same, at least or possibly entirely the same, but the context, the practice is different, right? So these pieces move not only material in the, materially in the world and across space, but also in and out of contexts, right? So there's component, there's object, and then there's use, context of use, right? Ritual use, right? So things move in and out of these spaces. I think that's that's just what I wanted to say, just to kind of get us going. Um, and let me see. Oh, no, sorry. Sorry, there's a whole nother one. Big one here, an important one, at least for me, because I'm into this particular thing. So here we have this one on the left, again, something from our uh, store of objects that we'll hear about. Uh, what is it? I don't know. We're going to hear, we're going to find out, right? But we have, again, centrally, uh, uh, some kind of incantation in Indic script on the top and on the bottom, we have a, you know, a title and something like a colophon on the bottom. One thing I wanted to point out, and I'm not you know, totally sure about this because I just you know, heard about these things. Uh, on the top, the title goes from our left to our right. The colophon on the bottom goes from our right to our left, right? Why is that? Why is that? Is it because, now here's just a crazy speculative question. Don't write this down. Don't say cop said this. I'm just wondering. It's just, you know, the, the dharani is sort of moving 
um, I'm sorry, the, 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 the swastika image, the once, right, is at least notionally moving clockwise, right? Now, here's a crazy question. I don't know if this is true. So does that mean that the text is going this way and then going this way? I mean, is the whole thing spinning? Is the whole thing spinning? I don't know. I don't know. It just is an idea that's a question that might be fruitful to ask. Again, silly question, perhaps, but maybe not. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's part of what this thing is. Maybe it's part of how it was made. Right, why it was made the way it was made. Um, we also have this this wanza, right? This swastika. You know, when we think about uh, material circulation of, of images, right? We have, you know, you can kind of trace the movement over time of these swastika images on seals, on stamps. You know, from 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 the perspective of East Asia, from the deepest West, right, across almost like breadcrumbs you know, across the Silk Road into East Asia, right? I have this stamp from Yot Khan in Central Asia, right? Found by Stein. Um, there are a lot of them. And then at Dunhuang Mogao, Mogao Cave 148, right? We have, uh, here's a mural. Um, there's a seal or a stamp of some kind in the hands of this Bodhisattva. There's a very, it's on our, the very lower left of the image there. Uh, we have a kind of a swastika there, at least in my mind. Um, there are also lots of, uh, lots, three or four or five silk paintings from uh, Dunhuang portable paintings uh, with bodhisattvas with very clear uh, swastika stamps, right? Here we have a swastika in Korea. Obviously, they're not just in stamps, they're everywhere. But when we think about how the, you know, the components out of which it was made, we can break the, these things down, right? So here we have this. Why was this used this way? Right? Why was this component used in there, right? The why and also the how and also the questions of circulation of materiality. Once we're talking about objects, we're talking about the physical bodily material world. And then immediately we're in a world of movement, right? Of circulation. So again, just some stuff to kind of get us going. Maybe none of you will find any of these questions interesting. Maybe they're just not interesting, but you know, I'm gonna be thinking about them. You guys uh, will, think what you want. I just wanted to get the juices flowing a little bit because at least in Chicago, it's just frightfully early. And now my own juices are flowing and um, that's what I got. So I'm not gonna share anymore. And I am going to uh, cede the floor to, to the real experts here. Okay, thanks everyone. Muting now, by the way. Okay. Okay, well, Paul, thank you very much for your wonderful lecture. Uh, it became really a great uh, start, of, uh, start of this workshop. Now, uh, the Venerable Monk Jeonggak will show the objects and begin uh, explanation of those objects. So, how 오늘 이제 지금부터 이제 90분 동안 이제 여러 가지 이 원각사의 한 2,000여 점 정도의 이제 유물이 소장이 돼 있는데요. 그 중에서 어 그래도 좀더 가치가 있고 많은 사람들이 이제 그 어떤 중요성을 갖다가 조금 더어 알았으면 하는 것을 이제 몇몇 개를 골라 가지고. 오늘은 2000여 점의 유물들 가운데서 한 기껏 해봤자 한 30여 점, 40점 정도가 소개가 되는 것 같습니다. 그런데 네, 그 중에서 대부분이. 네. Uh, well, at this, uh, in his collection, he has uh, more than 2,000 objects. Uh, but for today's workshop, uh, he chose the most valuable objects and also the objects uh, which uh, better fits for uh, today's topic. And that, uh, so he will show about 20 or so objects. Yeah, 그 중에서 이제 이, 그 중에서도 이제 많은 유물들 가운데서도 이제 제일 먼저 이 불교 경전과 테라니, 그리고 이제 몇몇 어떤 불화, 아, 그리고 이제 몇몇 공예 작품들을 이번 시간을 통해서 여러 교수님들과 학생들 여러분들께 소개를 드리고자 합니다. So he will show several uh, very important uh, Buddhist sutras 
and Tarani prints and a Buddhist painting and some uh, crafts. 하여튼 이 1시간 30분 동안에 이 시간을 통해 가지고 여기에 참석한 모든 많은 분들이 어 여러 어떤 흥미로운 유물들을 갖다가 돈으로 보시면서 또한 이 한국만의 어떤 특징적인 예도 이 안에서 발견이 될수 있기 때문에 이 유물들을 보면서 이 한국 유물의 어떤 전통 의미성 그리고 그러한 특징들 그런 걸볼수 있는 계기가 되었으면 좋겠습니다. So from now on he will explain the chosen objects for about 90 minutes and he hopes that through this workshop uh, the participants of today will learn about the characteristics of Korean Buddhist objects. 네. 일단 그러면 강의를 시작을 하도록 어 강의라기보다도 네. 이제 유물을 실제 실제로 보면서 그 유물과 관련된 주변 얘기를 이제 시작을 하도록 하겠습니다. So he will show the first object. 아마 요거를 이제 이번에 해보자고요. 네. 네. 예, 예. PPT도 띄워주십시오. So, so uh, we will uh, upload the PowerPoint the venerable monk Jungkook made, uh, so that you can compare. I mean, he will use uh, some of the PowerPoints for uh, his references, uh, and you can on the screen you can uh, see both the PowerPoint and the object, and you can also adjust the size of the two screens. 먼저 이 대장경과 아, 관련된 잠시만요, 가지고. 스님 아직 이게 안 됐죠. 하나는 유물 요걸로 바꿔 주시고요. 어, 저희 화면에 예 됐어요. 아, 됐네요. 하고 하나는 아, 네, 네, 좋습니다. 예, 네. 네. 먼저 이 불교 이 한국에 있는 이 대장경을 설명하기 앞서 가지고 이 중국의 대장경의 간략한 이 역사에 대해서 한번 알아볼 필요가 있게 됩니다. 그런 걸 먼저 설명을 드리도록 하겠습니다. So he will first show the uh, he will show this blue scroll which is in his hand and this is a scroll printed from the uh, first made uh, uh, Tripitaka Korean which you can also call the first edition of Korean Buddhist canon and in order to better explain this object he will briefly explain the history of Chinese Tripitaka using the PowerPoint. 대장경이라고 하는 것이 처음 만들어졌던 것은 그러니까 대장경이라고 하는 것은 개별 경전이 아닌 전체 경전의 집성 그걸 대장경이라고 하는데 그 대장경이라고 하는 것은 처음으로 이 송나라 때 북송에서 개보 연간에 처음으로 대장경이 전체가 보아졌다라고 네. 얘기를 합니다. 네. 그걸 개보 즉판 네. 대장경이라고 말합니다. 네. 어... The Tripitaka means the entire collection of uh, Buddhist scriptures and Buddhist texts. And the first Tripitaka was created under the uh, Northern Song Dynasty. And this is known uh, the uh, Kai Bao Tripitaka. 970년에서 980년경에 개보 연간에 처음으로 대장경 경전이 하나의 테두리 안에 집대성돼 가지고 만들어졌는데 그때 만들어졌던 것이 대략 5천여 권 정도가 만들어진 걸로 알고 있는데 그럼에도 지금 현재 전 세계에 담아 있는 것은 5천여 권 가운데 열몇 몇 권 정도만 담아 있는 상황입니다. 네. 어... So between 971 and uh, 983, which was during the uh, Kaibao rain period, uh, people made this Kaibao Tripitaka, and its amount was more than 5,000 scrolls, and it had uh, more than one, uh, 130,000 wood blocks. But, until, uh, but today, only uh, just a little bit more than 10 scrolls printed out from these wood blocks uh, survive. 그때 만들어졌던 대장경 가운데 일부가 
1991년 그러니까 고려시대 한국에 전해져가지고 어, 유통되었던 기록이 담아 있습니다. Uh, according to according to the uh, historical record known as 고려사 or the history of Korea, uh, some of, some of the uh, Buddhist scrolls printed from Kai, uh, from this Kaibao Tripitaka was transmitted to Korea in the year 1991. <laughs> 이 크란에서는 1030년 경부터 1050년 사이에 이 대장경을 만들었는데 그 크란에서도 약 5천여 권 정도를 갖다가 만들었는데 그때 그란 대장경이 만들어졌던 것이 1059년 완성됐던 걸로 알고 있습니다. 네. 어, not only the northern song but also the Liao dynasty also made a uh, tripitaka and uh, it was completed probably in the year 1059, and it, uh, its amount was more than 5,000 uh, scrolls. 그때 만들어졌던 대장경 역시도 카란에서 이 고려에로 건네졌고 그것을 카란에서 보냈던 그 대장경을 왕이 밖에 이먼 거리까지 나가 가지고 대장경을 맞아 드렸다라고 하는 것이 고려사 내용 가운데 기록이 되어 있습니다. 어, uh, this uh, Kitan uh, Tripitaka was also printed out and then sent to Korea and according to the history of Korea, uh, at the time the Korea king received the printed Tripitaka with proper ceremonial attire and procession. 이 고려 대장경 그리고 이것뿐만이 아니고 중국에서는 숙령장, 사계장 그리고 또그 이외에도 여러 경전들이 만들어지게 되었는데 그러한 경전들을 바탕으로 해가지고 이제 이 고려 시대 1011년에 초조 대장경이라고 하는 경전 결집을 갖다가 하게 됩니다. Besides these two kinds of uh, tripitaka, uh, in China, other types of tripitakas, uh, such as Chongning tripitaka, Sushi uh, tripitaka, and Pilo tripitaka were created. And then they were transmitted to Korea, which became the basis of the first made tripitaka koreana. 1011년에 시작해가지고 1087년에 대장경이 전체 완성이 되었는데 약 6천여 권 정도의 대장경이 만들어졌던 걸로 기록이 되어 있습니다. 그리고 그때 만들어졌던 대장경은 송나라 개보칙판 대장경 그리고 허란 대장경을 많이 첨부해 가지고 그것을 종합한 예라고 말할 수 있습니다. 네. 어... The first made uh, Tripitaka Koreana was uh, carved between 1011 and 1087. Once printed out, its amount was uh, uh, more than 6,000 scrolls. And when people made this uh, Tripitaka, they uh, heavily referred to Kaibao Tripitaka and the Kitan Tripitaka. This 고려를 침공하려고 했었는데 그 크란족의 침공을 부처님의 위신력으로 그걸 막고자 하는 그런 원력 그런 이 원으로 인해서 이 대장경을 처음 만들게 되었습니다. Uh, the Korea court uh, started this project of making a uh, tripitaka uh, in order to protect the country against the invasion of the Uh, the Liao dynasty founded by the Kitans. 그때 만들었던 대장경은 이제 개성 현화사에 보관이 돼 있다가 또한 흥왕사에 보관이 되었다가 나중에는 봉고군이 한국을 고려를 침공하게 됩니다. 그래서 이 봉고군에게 그 경전이 훼손될까 우려돼 가지고 팔공산 부인사로 옮겼는데. 그런데 이 봉고군에 의해서 1232년에 이 목판이 불타버리게 됩니다. 
the Tripitaka wood blocks were kept at monasteries, including Hyunwangsa and Hungwangsa. Uh, but then when the Mongols invaded Korea, uh, Korea people moved the wood blocks to the monastery known as Buinsa, located on Mount Palgong in Daegu. But unfortunately, during the war, uh, I mean, during the Mongol invasion, the entire wood blocks were destroyed in the year 1232. <laughs> 거기에서 찍어놨던 음. 인출했던 경전들이 지금 다행스럽게 담아 있어서 한국에 약 300여 권 그리고 일본 등지 2,500여 권 두루마리가 남아 있는 실정입니다. Although the entire wood blocks uh, from this first made Tripitkana Koreana were destroyed, uh, some of the scrolls which were printed from the wood blocks before its uh, destruction still survive. Uh, so uh, about 300 scrolls from these wood blocks remain in Korea and about 2,500 scrolls are scattered in Japan and other countries. The Chojo Dejanggyeong 특징은 송나라 때의 판형 형식을 그대로 보강을 하게 됩니다. 여기서부터 실제 인물 혹시 보여주시면 네. 보강을 하게 되는데 어떤 차이점이 하나는 맨 끝부분에 이 송나라 것은 이제 이 저기 뭐야 이 어떤 간기 간행과 관련된 기록이 담겨져 있는 것에 비해서 초조 대장경은 간행 기록이 없는 그런 차이점이 있습니다. Yeah. Uh, so the general format of this first made uh, Tripitaka Koreana pretty much followed that of the uh, Kaibao uh, Tripitaka from the Northern Song, but there is one big difference. Unlike the Kaibao Tripitaka, which has the publication record at the end, uh, the first made Korea, uh, uh, the first made uh, Tripitaka Koreana doesn't have such publication records at the end. 어찌됐건 지금 현재 담아 있는 이 대장경 한국의 300여 권 그리고 이 일본 등지 2,500여 권 해서 담아 있는 초조 대장경 그 중에서 지금 국내에 담아 있는 일부는 이 국보로 지정이 되고 또한 많은 것이 보물로 지정돼 있기도 합니다. Among the surviving uh, scrolls printed from this first made Tripitaka Koreana, uh, like uh, 20 of them have been designated as the national treasure by the Korean government, and 16 have been designated as treasure. And you will see one of them here today. <laughs> 지금 여러분들께서 이게 이제 보시게 네. 될 바로 이 해반야 바라멜타경 이것은 지금 국보로 지정되어 있는 것과 이제 동일한 경전인 것을 볼 수가 있습니다. 그래서 네. 이 국보로 지정된 또한 보물로 지정된 것과 동일한 같은 네. 어떤 경전인데 네, 지금 현재 보물을 보게 되면요. 네. 네. 네, 현재 보물이고 국방의 네, 동일한 것으로 보고 So the offset, I mean the scroll that you are seeing on the screen here, uh, is one of the treasure designated by the Korean government, and there is exactly the same type of scroll in the collection of uh, National Museum of Korea, which is one of the national treasures. 근데 이 경전이 지금 여기 글씨를 보시면은 굉장히 정교하게 글씨를 갖다가 만들어 놓고 있는 것을 볼 수가 있는데요. 그리고 여기에는 경전 제목이 있고 그 다음에 여기는 함사 협회에서 이것이 어떠한 함에 이것을 보관하고 있느냐 그걸 나타내고 있는 그리고 그 다음 uh, so here you can see the title of this scroll and this letter here uh, shows the uh, name uh, of the, uh, the box yeah. which, uh, which was used to contain these scrolls. Uh, what it means is that there are lots of lots of, uh, I mean the amount of the scrolls is huge 
So there are many boxes which were keeping those schools. So they needed kind of uh, special letters which marked uh, the, 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 how do you say, the sequence of those uh, boxes or the containers. 이게 얘기해서 풀기가 행복한 한 장. 그리고 또 다시 한 장을 이어붙이고 하는데 이어붙이는 그 종이 옆에 음. 이제 장 표시를 이렇게 해 놨습니다. 네. 어 like after people printed the scroll, I mean from one wood block you can print one piece of paper and then you have to, you have to connect those printed out papers in order to make this kind of long scroll. So here, here you can this seam. This is a seam that connected two papers. So paper from this side and paper from this side are from different wood blocks. 그리고 지금 이것은 전부 다, 다 펼쳐 보일 수는 없지만 음. 맨 마지막에 보면은 지금 저기 PPT 화면을 보시게 되면은 맨 마지막에. 이 책을 찍어냈던 기록이 남아 있습니다. 그 기록에 의하면은 이 경전은 1046년에 이 김해 호장 호진수라고 하는 사람에 의해 가지고 이것이 이 인출되었다, 찍어냈다라고 하는 그런 기록이 있어서 1046년 이전에 이 경전이 지켜졌구나라고 하는 것을 알수 있습니다. So once you make those wood blocks, you can make uh, many prints at any time. So this particular scroll was printed out before the year 1046. Uh, How do we know that? Because at the end of this scroll, uh, as you can see on the PPT, uh, there is a there's a there's a handwritten uh, sentence. Which says that a person named Ha Jin Su donated money in order to make this print out of those blocks. Mm -hmm. And uh, the date of that inscription is written uh, the year uh, written as the year 1046, the fourth lunar month. And the person uh, named Ha Jin Su was a local governor. Uh, known as I mean, the local governor position, known as Hojang. He was holding the position uh, in the location or administrative region known as Kimhebo. Wow, uh, it is at the very end of the school. 그리고 이 초조 대장경에서는 특징적으로 이 경전 각각의 글씨 가운데 피휘라고 하는 것이 발견되고 있는데요. PPT 화면에 보시면은. 여기에서 이 경, 경자, 그리고 이 은자 등등에서 이 글씨를 갖다가 획을, 획 가운데 일부를 빼놓는 그런 현상들을 볼수 있습니다. 그걸 피휘라고 합니다. 그거는 개포장을 그대로 가져와서 그렇게 되는 거예요? 네. 예. Uh, and one of the characteristics of these, uh, uh, of the first made Tripitaka Koyama, is the naming the bull, which is known as Hiwi, uh, because it is based on the Kaibao Tributaka, which was made during the uh, Song Dynasty uh, Emperor Taizu. Uh, people, uh, uh, people, uh, when people, I mean, when there are letters that overlaps with the given name, of the grandfather and father of the northern uh, northern Song Emperor Taizu, they uh, they intentionally uh, how to say removed some of the lines from those characters because they thought that it's not polite to use the characters used uh, for the names of the emperor's father and grandfather. Mm -hmm. 그리고 이 초조대장경에 대해서는 이만 설명하기로 하고요. 그리고 이 초조대장경이 이제 팔공산 부인사에서 이 이제 몽고군의 침략에 의해 가지고 이제 초조대장경 목판이 팔공산 부인사에서 보존이 돼 있었는데 몽고군들이 침입해 와 가지고 팔공산 부인사에 
목판을 태워버리게 됩니다. So, as you mentioned earlier, the wood blocks of the first Korean Buddhist canon were destroyed during the Mongol invasion of Korea. 그래가지고서는 그 당시에 이 최고의 어떤 군사 권력자였던 최이라고 하는 사람이 또 다시 이 몽고군의 침입을 어떻게 막아낼 수 있느냐 부처님의 은혜, 부처님의 위신력에 이 기댈 수밖에 없다 라고 하는 생각 속에서 불타버린 초조 대장경을 대신해서 다시 검 대장경을 한각하고자 원을 세우게 됩니다. So the military leader of the time uh, named Choi Yi, uh, he vowed to uh, make the second edition of Korean Buddhist canon uh, relying on uh, Buddha's power to dro- drive away the Mongols. 1236년부터 이 대장경 편각을 시작을 해가지고요. 그 다음에 1242년까지 약 6년 동안에 이 전체 대장경의 약 40% 정도를 갖다가 이제 최이가 대장도감이라고 하는 기관을 설립해서 만들어내게 됩니다. So the military leader uh, who was the political leader of the time He established a government office called Bureau of Tripitaka uh, from 1237 to 1242. And the Bureau of Tripitaka, uh, they uh, inmate uh, over 40,000 wood blocks uh, for six years. But the Chui is n 정안이라고 하는 사람 또한 나머지 60%의 대장경을 한각하게 되는데 그것은 곧 남해 군사도감이라고 하는 곳에서 이 경전을 갖다가 목판을 만들어내게 된다. 전체 이 60% 정도를 정안이라고 하는 사람이 남해에서 목판을 만들게 됩니다. Uh, a man named Chong An was a close relative of K. E. He donated a large sum of money to carry on the carving project. And there was another office uh, established by the government uh, for printing the Tripitaka uh, in, uh, in the region called Namhe. Uh, the printing project at this uh, region was continued uh, until 1248. 그때 만들어졌던 이 대장경 목판을 가지고 고려시대에 찍었던 경전들이 많이 찍었을 건데 현재 담아 있는 것은 우리나라의 한국에 다섯 개밖에 담아 있지 않습니다. 고려시대 찍어낸 이 대장경. 그래서 이 다섯 개 가운데 이 하나가 지금 현재 여러분들께서 이제 화면으로 보시게 될이 유가사 지론이라고 하는 책입니다. So of course, a lot of uh, prints were made uh, out of uh, these uh, wood blocks for the second edition of the Korean Buddhist canon during the Korean period. But unfortunately, there are only five uh, surviving copies which were printed during the Korea dynasty. Mm. And all of them uh, are designated as treasure by the Korean government. This is one of the uh, one of such copies made during the Korea. 지금 이 책은 유가사지론이라고 하는 책입니다. 전체 유가사지론 가운데서 이 42권에 해당되는 이 내용이 되겠습니다. So this text, uh, this uh, handy scroll contains a text called the Yoga Charabuni Sastra, uh, which is Uh, which consists of uh, 100 volumes, and this particular hand scroll corresponds to the volume 42. You can see the number here. 그리고 이 경전을 보시게 되면은 위 아래가 이제 음. 많은 여백이 있으면서 또한 여백뿐만이 아니고 이 그런 듯한 그런 자국이 보여지는데 이러한 자국은 과연 뭐냐? 이제 많은 사람들 얘기가 이 경전을 불상 안에 도관을 해놨는데 그 소나무의 송진이 종이에 묻어가지고 이러한 식의 형태로서 종이에 영향을 끼쳤다고 합니다. 
So here you can see the uh, like ample margins uh, in the both the size of the text, and you can see the stains goes along the entire scope. And some people say that the handed skull might have been stored inside the inner recess of a uh, Buddhist image. And many of wooden images from the Korea period might have been made of pine tree. And there are. Uh, mm -hmm. The resin? Oh, yeah. Resin from so pine wood. Resins from the pine mm -hmm. tree might have been transferred to the paper. That's why it has this kind of things. So that's one guess. <laughs> 손상이 됐는데 요, 요, 요 부분들은 후대에 그냥 접어놓은 음. 부분. 아, 이거는 네. 원본이 네. 네. 보시면 네. 부분인가요? So here the two, two thirds of the uh, past is original and the upper part is restored uh, later in the modern times. 아무튼 이것은 이제 이 현재 한국에 다섯 건밖에 남아 있지 않은 고려 시대에 집어넣은 이 제조 대장경 가운데 하나인데 이 글씨 새김새가 굉장히 정교하고 해서 도판을 만들고 나서 초창기에 약 13세기 경에 또는 14세기 초반에 이 경전을 집어넣었던 것이다라고 생각할 수 있습니다. So here you can see the excellent craftsmanship of Korea carvers from the, uh, the lines of the characters. And you can see the crisp, crispness of the printed text, which means that it must have been uh, printed uh, not long after the initial uh, carving of the wood block. So it must have been printed uh, during the uh, late 13th or 14th century during the Korea. 맨 마지막 PPT 화면을 보시면은 맨 마지막에 찍어놓은 연대가 기록이 되어 있는데. So please yeah. see the uh, PPT. You can see uh, the color from at the end of the scroll. 그 기록에 보면 이 경전은 1247년에 만들어낸 걸로 알게 되어 있습니다. So according to the color from at the end of the hand scroll, uh, this particular text was carved in 1247. 근데 이때 만들었던 이 대장경 그 목판이 강화 선원사라고 하는 곳에 있었는데요. 그 목판이 섬에 있다 보니까 이런다가 위험한 또한 또한 이 밖에 이 다른 나라에서 침입을 해오게 되면은 그 목판이 안전하지 못하겠다 해가지고 조선 시대 와가지고 그때 만들었던 강화 선원사의 목판을 합천 해인사로 옮기고자 계획을 하게 됩니다. So as Ben uh, Jonggap mentioned earlier, uh, the wood blocks of the Second Korean Buddhist Canon were made uh, during the Mongol invasion, uh, during which the capital of Korea was transferred to Kangwa Island. So uh, the, the, the humid atmosphere, the humid climate of the island was not good for preserving the wood blocks. So in the early years of the Joseon Dynasty, which succeeded Korea, in 1398, the king ordered to transfer wood blocks to Heinza, uh, the home of uh, the wood blocks until today. 지금 해인사에 지금 이 판본이 담아 있는데요. 지금 여러 차례 이 판을 보관하기 위해 가지고 건물들을 갖다가 짓고 지금까지 막 제대로 보관이 돼 가지고 이러한 형태의 어떤 화면에 보시면은 이 건물 안에 목판이 보관이 돼 있습니다. So after the wood blocks were initially transferred to Heinza. Uh, at the end of the 14th century, the Joseon government sponsored a uh, building of uh, special storage buildings uh, several times in like 14, uh, 1457. And the, uh, the wood blocks are safely kept at Pensa until now. 이 경전을 보면은 지금 현재 전체 이 경전 목판의 판수가 8만 1258매로 구성이 되어 있습니다. The number of uh, wood blocks are over uh, uh, 84, uh, 80,000, <웃음> over 80,000. Yeah. 
예. 그리고 지금 이 목판 그리고 이 목판으로 찍어낼 수 있는 경전은 전체가 6,568권의 경전이 이 목판에 담겨져 있습니다. So the wood of brass contains over 2,000종 이상이요. 예. Uh, 6,000 titles of Buddhist text. 지금 현재는 유네스코 세계 문화 유산으로 지금 지정이 되어 있습니다. So the wood blocks themselves are designated as the World Cultural Heritage. 그러면 이제 그 다음에 이제 활자본 경전에 대해서 얘기를 갖다가 이제 전해드리겠습니다. 이 우리나라 이 한국에서는 활자가 그 옛날부터 많이 이 만들어져 가지고요. 맨 처음 활자가 만들어졌던 기록이 1239년에 활자가 어, 활자를 가지고 경전을 만들어 놓은. 그러한 기록이 담아 있습니다. So from now on, Ben j o n g a is uh, going to talk about uh, texts printed uh, with movable metal types. Uh, the the first one was made in 12 uh, 이고려시대에이상정예문자라고하는이러한어떤그어떤활자가있었고요그다음에흥덕사자라고하는활자가있어서지금현재는이프랑스국립도서관에현존하고있죠1377년에 만든최초의활자인쇄본이것이고려시대
It has great significance as the first book ever translated into vernacular Korean using Hangul. Uh, here you can see like uh, uses of Korean uh, vernacular alphabets called Kunmin uh, during the Joseon period, which is uh, uh, usually referred to as Hangul. 그리고 이 책을 보면은 맨 마지막 장을 이제 보게 되면요. 이 책에 하는 교정 구호가 적혀 있는 것을 볼수 있는데 지금 이런 식의 음. 약간 교정을 본 흔적들이 있습니다. 아, so 여기에서 can, 교정을 본 흔적이 음. 있고요. Here you can see red like circle and many marks. These are correction marks during the revision process. 근데 이러한 교정을 본 사람의 이름이 맨 마지막 장에 여기 적혀 있거든요. 여기에 보면은 김여산이라고 하는 사람의 이름이 적혀 있습니다. Here you can uh, here we can see a name of a person named Kim Yeosan. He is the person who proofread the entire text. 그 김여산이라고 하는 사람은 정음청이라고 하는 기관에 소속된 어떤 공무원이었었는데요. 곧 은민정음과 관련된 기관에 소속된 사람이었었죠. 그러다 보니까 이, 이것을 이제 한글로 번역한 이 경전 이것의 이 어떤 문제점 오류를 갖다 잡아내 가지고 또 다른 경전을 만들어내기 위한 그런 준비 작업으로서 이런 교정을 갖췄다. 그런 것을 알수 있습니다. So according to the historical records, we we know a little bit of information about this person, Kim Yeosan. He was a government official at the Bureau of Hangul, so which he administered things related to this new vernacular Korean alphabet. So uh, at the office, uh, he uh, may have worked for like, improving uh, this uh, Hangul system. 그리고 또 하나 소개해 드릴 책이 하나가 있는데요. 이것은 이제 묘법 연화경이라고 합니다. 이 묘법 연화경이라고 하는 이 경전은 간경도감이라고 하는 곳에서 이걸 만들어낸 책이거든요. 이 간경도감이라고 하는 것은 이제 경전을 가능하기 위해 가지고 조선시대 특별하게 관청을 만들어서 불교 경전만을 갖다가 간행하기 위한 어떤 관청을 만든 겁니다. Now he is showing uh, one of the uh, Lotus Sutra. This one was published by an institution known as Kangyeongdoga. Kangyeongdoga was a special institution established in only Joseon Dynasty in order to publish Buddhist texts. 이 간경도감에서 맨 처음 만들어 놓은 것이 이제 등엄경 조금 전에 봤던 등엄경과 관련된 번역본이 나왔고요. 보판본으로 찍었고요. 그 다음에 두 번째. Uh, one of the first publications by this 간경도감 uh, were the uh, Shurangama Sutra, uh, one of the example of uh, which you just saw as an, uh, as an example. 간경도감에서 이제 만든 이두 번째로 만든 이 법화경 이 경전 맨 앞에 보게 될것 같으면은 이 변상도라고 하는 한화가 지켜져 있는 것을 볼수 있습니다. After publishing the Suran uh, Suranama Sutra, the uh, 간경도감 and then published the Lotus Sutra, and this uh, this codex has a frontispiece. Uh, this large uh, wood block printed illustration uh, at the beginning. 또한 간경도감에서 이걸 만들고 이 앞에 보게 될것 같으면은 교정이라고 하는 도장이 찍혀져 있습니다. 그래서 이걸 만들어서 처음 찍어서 교정 보기 위한 이 처음의 판본인 것. 그리고 이걸 이제 교정을 보고 난 다음에 약간 손질을 해서 그 다음 책들을 또 찍었겠죠. And at the beginning of the text part, you can see this red seal, and it, it is written 
교정, uh, which means uh, revision and correction. So according to the Venerable Monk Tonga, this version, uh, this version of wood block was uh, uh, created uh, as a, how to say, like a test version. And after going through the revision, they would have made more complete version of this uh, text. 그리고 이 책에 이제 후반부에 보게 될것 같으면 이제 이 1463년이라고 하는 이 1007년이라고 하는 1463년 연대가 붙여서 아, 1300, 아, 1463년에 이 책을 제거했구나라고 하는 것을 알수 있습니다. Here you can see the character Tian Shen Qinyan, which is for, which is the year 1463. So we can know when these uh, wood blocks were created. 이 책은 이책 가운데서 이제 중요한 것은 이 종이를 보시면요, 이 종이를 고정지라고 합니다. 이 지푸락, 이 지푸락이 그러니까 닭 종이에다가 또 지푸라기를 같이 섞어가지고 이 종이를 갖다가 만들어서 쓰고 있거든요. 간경도감에서 만든 책들은 거의 고정지가 사용이 되었다라고 합니다. 여기에 보면은 아주 거친 거기 뭐야 어, 어, 지푸라기 그런 것들이 막 섞여 있는 것을 볼수 있습니다. 그런 Here, uh, he is explaining us about the type of the paper uh, which was used for this codex. Uh, this is special kind of paper known as 고정지. Uh, this paper is made uh, with both mulberry and uh, straw. I guess you have seen many mulberry papers, but this is special because it also mixed with straw. And here uh, you can see this low and low straws. And the institution Kangyeongdogam usually used this type of paper again, which is known as Kojongji. 이 책에서 가장 중요한 것은 여타의 것보다도 여기 실려져 있는 판화를 들수 있습니다. Probably the most important part of this codex is this illustration or the frontispiece. 이 판화를 영산설법도라고 흔히 얘기를 합니다. Uh, the, the topic of this illustration is Shakamunugura preaching on the virtual peak. 지금 PPT 화면을 보시게 되면은 이 영산설법도 지금 여기 사용되고 있는 것은 원래는 영나라에서 1417년에 찍었던 죄불의 보살 영진 가곡이라고 하는 책에 처음 이와 같은 의연이 소개가 되고 있습니다. As you can see on the PPT screen, uh, the basis or the prototype of this illustration comes from uh, the Chinese, uh, Chinese, uh, how to say, Buddhist scripture, which was published in the year 1417, entitled "The Song of the Names of All the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas." 영나라에서 이 가져왔던 이 경전에 담겨져 있는 그 변상도 판 판화를 바탕으로 1459년에 변성함이라고 하는 절에서 또 법화경을 만들었는데 그 법화경 맨 앞에 이와 같은 한화가 실려져 있습니다. Oh, uh, there's a link between that 1417 Ming Dynasty illustration and the Sutra uh, illustration that you just saw, and that link is is uh, this wood block print that you're looking at on the Zoom. This one was published in the year. 1459. 그리고 이 그림에 영향을 받아가지고 간경도감의 이 판화가 만들어졌다. 약간 그런 얘기죠. And with the influence of the woodblock print that you just saw, this particular illustration was created in 1463. 그리고 그 판화에 또이 간경도감 판화에 영향을 받아가지고요. 
70년에 또다시 이제 법화경이 만들어지는데 여기에도 이 판화의 영향을 받아가지고 이제 만들어진 판화가 1470년의 책에도 실려져 있는 것을 볼 수가 있습니다. Uh, this, uh, this illustration uh, on the top is, uh, I mean, this one was published in the year 1470, uh, 1470. So this one is later than this one, but as you can see, uh, their style and the format design are uh, uh, generally very similar. 그리고 이 판화는 이 책에서뿐만이 아니고 이제 이후에 수많은 사찰의 국을 평화의 어떤 가장 오본이 되어지는 그림이 되기도 합니다. 그런 점에서 굉장히 중요한 어떤 그림이라고 할수 있습니다. These two illustrations are very important because many of the uh, later Joseon Dynasty Buddhist paintings. And not just the illustrations, but the big Buddhist paintings that were hung at the monastery were, uh, I mean, they copied and uh, followed the style and the details of these illustrations. The Gyeongjeon is a little bit more than a few times. The next one is the Gyeongjeon. 다란이 있다간 것에 대해서 설명을 드리고자 합니다. Now we will move on to the 이 다란이 있다고 하는 것은 이제 일단 이 불교의 가장 중요한 어떤 이 교리상의 어떤 요점 아니면은 신들의 이름 또는 중요한 교리의 어떤 내용, 핵심 그런 걸 갖다가 짤막하게 이 범자로 표기해 놓은 걸 갖다가 다란이라고 얘기를 갖다 하고 있는데 그 중에서 지금 화면에 보시는 것은 일체 예를 심 비밀 전신설이 고역 다란이라고 하는 다란이입니다. Well, the Dharani itself um, is short to this cast, which is uh, in English uh, called uh, incantation or spell uh, that uh, um, encapsulates the Buddhist teaching and the, is the essence of Buddhist teaching or like Buddha's name or many more things. And here, uh, Ben jong shows one example of such Dharani texts, which are held in the high regard in East Asia. Uh, it is called uh, the Dharani of the precious casket seal of the concealed complete body relics of the essence of all Tathagatas. Here you have the title of the Dharani on top border, uh, starting from uh, left to right. 그리고 이 밑에 보게 될것 같으면은 이 천덕 사년이라고 하는 어떤 연대가 적혀 있고요. 그 다음에 해진사라고 하는 절에서 해양사라고 하는 절에서 범학 비구 보휘라고 하는 사람이 이걸 갖다가 쓴 내용이 적혀 있는 것을 볼수 있습니다. So on the bottom of the print, we have uh, another line of uh, Chinese characters, which is uh, corresponds to the color print. Uh, the inscription says that uh, the written by the uh, master of Indic study, Pomhak Desa, named Tohi, and block carved at He Heansa in the first lunar months of Tiendo first year, which corresponds to 1152. Here we have uh, Tiendo uh, first year. 그리고 이 드라니가 형태는 이제 반자 형태인데요. 이 반자 형태 안에서 이 내용이 어떠한 식으로 배치가 되는 것은 PPT 화면을 보시게 되면은 글자가 여기에서부터 시작해서 여기에서 화살표를 쫓아가는 데 방향에 따라 가지고 글자가 배열된 것을 볼수 있습니다. Well, this Dharani print is very unique among many other Korea uh, period Dharani prints because of its uh, very unique uh, shape, uh, the swastika shape. And here, uh, the Dharani starts here. Uh, so here is the starting point and it proceeds along the uh, 
margin of this swastika shape like this. Here we we uh, align here and it goes like this and and the uh, the number two on the PPT screen marks the ending point of the entire dharma. 그 다음 이제 소개해 드릴 것은 이제 이 테이블 정 친원 친원 계란이 압구라고 하는 이런 형태의 계란인데요. Uh, the next example is another Dharani print, uh, which is called Mixed Dharani, including uh, Great Ushunisha Dharani. This Dharani is here, you can see it as a one-year-old period. It is written as 1295, it is written as 1295. So the uh, well, the Dharani, uh, the print, the print itself uh, consists of uh, like several limbs, and the outermost limb has a colophon starting here uh, with the date of carving. So one jung one yun, which corresponds to twelve ninety five. Go, the whole of the 가란의 명칭, 명칭이 쓰여져 있습니다. 몇 가지 어떤 이 명칭에 보게 될것 같으면 26가지의 가란의 이름이 외곽에 쓰여져 있고요. So after giving the, uh, no, I'm sorry, so here, 대불장 진원, 45수 진원. Uh, the outermost ring, besides the colophon, it has the uh, like titles of 26 Dharanis. So starting from here, it begins with the great uh, Ushunisha Dharani and the 42 hands and Shurangama Dharani and so on. 그리고 이 각각 조그만한 원 안에 각각 스물여섯 개의 계란이를 이 가운데 계란이 중요한 이 진원을 갖다가 이 안에다가 스물여섯 개를 동그라미 안에다가 표기를 해놨습니다. So and this ring has twenty six small circles, which corresponds to the twenty six kinds of dharani. So each circle has one uh, dharani. 그리고 이 안에 불정심인이라고 하는 불인 도장과 함께 각각 사천왕을 이 옆에다가 배치해 놓은 것을 볼 수가 있습니다. So at the center of the entire circle, we have a very unique and intriguing uh, image, <laughs> which is called 불정심인, which might be roughly translated as seal of the mind of the Buddha's crown. And here we have like four small circles uh, at the four points uh, at the four points. And each circle has one Siddham character and uh, collectively the four letters uh, symbolizes uh, the four heavenly kings. So, and then Jonga uh, summarized that the Dharani is inscribed inside uh, this uh, ring, uh, seem to have been uh, 26 kinds of uh, Dharani's and mantras. Okay, uh, now he's showing another type of Tarani, and in the center, uh, there are Siddham letters which symbolizes the 37 uh, Buddhas and Kiris, which you can see in the center of the diamond random wonder. 5년에서 1301년에 이게 찍어낸 것을 알 수가 있습니다. Here, inside this small cartouche, uh, there is, uh, it is written, 대덕 5년 11월 
uh, 11월 1일. I'm reading it Korean in Korean pronunciation because this is Korean object. 일곱 여기에는 이제 각수 이름이 있습니다. So and here you can see uh, the name of the made the wood block of uh, wood block of this uh, Tarani, and his it is written. San in Sogo, so we can know that the carver's name was Sogo. 이 드라니는 불상 안에 복장용으로 들어갔던 걸로 추정이 되는데 이 외곽에 있는 수많은 사람들은 그 당시에 불상을 개선했을 때 동참했었던 시조자들이라는 알수 있습니다. Uh, this Tarani was probably enshrined inside a Buddhist statue. And here you can see uh, many names of the people, and they were probably the donor of that Buddhist statue. 이 드라니에 대한 PPT 화면을 보시게 되면은 이제 금강계 반드라 가운데 성신회의 37존을 이러한 형태로 배치한 것을 알수 있습니다. As you can see on the PPT, uh, in the center of this Tarani. Uh, some letters which symbolizes the 37 uh, theories uh, that appear in the center of the uh, diamond from the mandala. Uh, the diamond from the mandala has nine sections, and these 37 theories appear in the central, uh, central part of the mandala, which is known as, uh, known as the perfect body assembly. 그리고 외곽의 동서남북은 역시 사천왕들을 갖다가 외곽에다가 원을 동그랗게 그어서 어, 만들어서 배치하는 것을 알수 있습니다. And the Siram letters in these four small circles again symbolizes the four heavenly kings. 그다음 또한 장의 드라니를 갖다가 소개를 드리려고 하는데요. 이 드라니에는 여러 가지 어떤 복합적인 어떤 내용들이 이 안에 담겨져 있는 것을 볼수 있습니다. 이 불인과 특히 부적 같이 이 안에 담겨져 있는 것을 볼수 있습니다. On this uh, wood block print, you can see mixed Taranis and talismanic seals as well as the Buddha seals. 지금 여기는 불정심인이라고 하는 것이 여기 있고요. Here you are looking at the seal of the mind of the Buddha's crown. 그 다음에 여기는 부산만부, 그러니까 네. 저기 이 그것이 여기 이제 중심에 자리하고 있는 것을 볼 수가 있는데요. And in the center of this circle, just inside, here you can see a talisman known as 부산만부, which means uh, the which means that uh, it saves. From the difficult labor or difficult child uh, childbirth. 그리고 여기에는 이제 석가열의 화합이라고 얘기하는데 석가열을 중심으로 해서 밑에는 본서보살과 고현보살이 여기에 이제서 이 석가모니 부처님 삼존을 형성하고 있는 것을 알수 있습니다. And the venerable uh, venerable monk Chongga found that this particular seal symbolizes the Shakyamuni Buddha. And uh, at the bottom, there are two Siram letters which, e which each symbolizes the Banjushri Bodhisattva and Samantabhadra Bodhisattva. 그리고 이 밑에는 수많은 어떤 종류의 어떤 부적들이 같이 여기에 새겨져 있게 되는데요. 열다섯 종류의 부적이 새겨져 있는 것을 볼수 있습니다. And here you can see 15, 15 different talismanic seals. 그리고 여기에는 이 어떤 내용이 있느냐 하면 이 범죄라고 하는 것은 수많은 이 보살들이 수많은 부처님들이 머무는 곳이기 때문에 만약에 어떤 사람들이 이 범죄를 이 범죄에 예비하게 되면은 모두 성불할 것이다. 라는 내용이 담겨져 있습니다. Here in this cartouche, it is written that uh, the serum letters, uh, the serum letters are the site of enlightenment where all the Buddhas stay and preach. Uh, anyone who venerates those letters will obtain the Buddha food. 
이상으로 이 불교 경전과 타란에 대해 가지고 이제 설명을 드렸는데요. 우선 이만 우선 이 정도 하고 우선 잠깐 쉬는 시간을 갖고 다음 이어나가면 좋을 것 같습니다. Okay, so now we will uh, examine the, the three dimensional objects. And uh, by the way, uh, the venerable monk Jonggak and Professor Paul Kapp and I are now writing, co-writing an article about the Buddhist talisman axios, which, which you just saw. Yeah. 그러면 이제 예. 설명 시작하시겠어요? 네. 그러면 이제 이 다음으로는 이제 이 조그만한 목조 불의 곳. 보살 좌상 소개를 드리도록 하겠습니다. Uh, now you are looking at a small Kushiti Garba Bodhisattva statue on the table. 이 조그마한 이 이제 도피가 20cm밖에 안 되니까 아주 작은 형태의 보살상입니다. So its height is only 20cm, so it's very small. 근데 이 보살상은 17세기 후반, 18세기 초반 정도에 만들어졌던 걸로 추정이 되는데 왜냐하면 그 당시에 어떤 불상, 보살상을 만들지게 뭔가가 비례에 벗어나가지고 몸을 좀 길쭉하게 만드는 그런 양상이 17세기 후반, 18세기 초반에 보이거든요. 이런 양태를 통해 가지고 그 연대를 추정할 수 있습니다. Based on its style, we can infer that its date is between between late uh, between the late 17th and the uh, and the early 18th century. For example, its upper body is elongated, and it's one of the stylistic uh, feature of this time period. 근데 17세기 18세기 초반에 만들어진 불상인데도 이 불상이라고 하는 것은 가끔 각 지금 이제 계금이라고 하는 것을 하게 됩니다. 예를 들어서 지금 이 불상 뒷면을 보시게 되면은 이제 금칠된 것들이 벗겨져 있는 이 어떤 모습을 발견할 수 있거든요. 예를 들어서 불상, 보살상을 모셔놓고 가끔 이렇게 이 금을 칠해놓은 것들이 벗겨지게 된 그런 경우에 있어서는 이 금을 다시 칠하게 됩니다. 그걸 계금 불사라고 얘기합니다. Uh, once a Buddhist statue is completed, uh, as the time goes by, uh, the gilded parts uh, can be, uh, how to say, chipped off or broken. I mean, here you can see these black parts where the gold uh, has been, how to say, um, <laughs> peeled off. <laughs> so people uh, from time to time have uh, donated money in order to give a new gilding to a statue. 이 불상은 1977년에 다시 이 개금이 된 걸로 기록이 되어 있습니다. 근데 이 1977년에 개금 불사를 할 때에 이 안에 불상 안에 보게 되면은 이제 조그마한 구멍이 보이게 되는데 음. 이게 이 불상을 동안할 때 여기다가 복장물을 집어넣는 복장부라고 얘기를 하는 구멍이 있습니다. 이 안에서 여러 유물들이 이제 하나씩 하나씩 나오게 되었습니다. Based on the uh, based on the inscription, uh, how do you say, uh, people we uh, uh, discovered from inside this statue, we can know that this statue was uh, uh, was given a new gilding in the year 1977, and at the time, people added new objects and inscriptions inside the statue. And in Korea, uh, though uh, the text and the objects enshrined inside a Buddhist statue is known as Gokjang. 그러니까 1600년도 후반, 1700년도 초반에 만들어졌던 불상인데 나중에 개금을 하면서 개금이 끝나고 다시 이 안에 복장, 개금, 저만 연기라고 하는 것을 여기에다가 1977년에 적어놨는데 다시 이 발언문을 집어넣고 또한 발언문과 함께 이러한 양태의 어떤 
이 안에 복장을 다시 집어넣는 것을 볼수 있습니다. So the original 복장 inside this statue has been lost, but here we can see uh, the a set of 복장 which were uh, later added in the 1977. Um, don't it? Mm. 그리고 이 안에서 나온 복장물들 가운데 특징적인 것은 PPT 화면도 같이 보시면요. 이 안에 들어가 있는 이 주머니가 여섯 개가 있는데요. 이 여섯 개 안에서 각각 특이한 그런 내용들이 발견됩니다. 주머니 안에서. Because these 복장 are from 1977, it shows very interesting new characteristics that you cannot see uh, in the Joseon dynasty. For example, you can see these six small uh, uh, textile pouches. 이 빨간 주머니에서는 주사가 나오고 금이 나왔고요. 그 다음에 그 다음 주머니에서는 팥이 나오고 흥이 나오고 그 다음에 쌀이 나오고 그 다음에 보리가 나오고 그런 등등 이 안에 특징적인 물건을 집어넣는데 이 여섯 개의 주머니 그리고 색깔로서는 다섯 개의 색깔을 갖고 있는데 우리의 신체 조직 가운데 오장 육부라고 하는 그러한 것이 뭔가가 감안되지 않았느냐 생각을 할수 있습니다. 네. 어, these uh, these textile pouches include Objects, uh, I mean, the or ingredients or materials such as cinnabar and gold and fermented barley and red bean and uh, general beans and rice grain and uh, and how to say normal uh, barley grains. And it's very possible that these uh, these pouches symbolizes human organs or intestines. 이 중, 지금 현재 일본에 건너가 있는 고대 여당 저기 이 중국의 서당을 갔던 불상 안에 인간 신체의 장기가 그대로 어, 묘사가 되었던 형태가 불상 안에서 발견이 되었던 자가 있었는데 이러한 예는 이, 한국에서도 이 불상 안에 이런 장기와도 같은 이러한 형태로서 이그 복장을 해놨던 전통이 있었던 것이 아닐까 라는 추정을 하게 만듭니다. Uh, as is well known, uh, the, 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 some Chinese statues were the statues uh, of some Chinese or Japanese statues uh, were Chinese statues that were transmitted to Japan included uh, models of human organs. And these pouches suggest that there might have been similar tradition in pre-modern Korea as well. If you have more questions, you can ask the questions during the Q&A session and then now we will take a look at uh, the terracotta in the Chicago. So there is a Buddhist text uh, entitled The Sutra of the Dharmi of the Pure Light. 무구 정관 대다라니 경. 그 경전에 의하면은 탑을 수리하거나 탑 안에다가 조그맣게 진흙으로 만든 탑을 조성해서 그 안에 다라니를 써가 되고 탑 안에 오시게 되면은 수명이 길어지고 병든자 병의 고통에서 벗어나고 
쇼, 하기, 생에 다시 하기 하는 것이다. 라고하는 내용이 적혀 있습니다. So the sutra uh, instructs that if one uh, repairs a Buddha or uh, make small clay uh, Buddha miniatures or write down uh, the dharanis of inside the sutra, uh, those who practice uh, these uh, things, uh, they would enjoy longevity and they would be freed from the pain of uh, illness. They would be, they would obtain better reverse in the afterlife. 경전 설명에 의하면 이 조그마한 수탑을 진흙으로 만들어 가지고 진흙이 수탑 안에다가 순당 그라니 또 근본 그라니를 아흔 아홉 번 또는 칠십칠 번을 이 그라니를 서사해서 탁 안에다가 공안한다 라고 하는 내용이 있습니다. So the sutra has uh, six kinds of dharmas inside, and it has very detailed instruction for practicing these dharmas. Uh, for example, uh, the sutra instructs that if one uh, write down the root dharmi or dharmi of Pagoda Finio seventy-seven times or ninety-nine times, and uh, put this Dharani inscription together with a miniature pagoda inside a larger pagoda, the, uh, the practitioner would gain uh, a sundry of uh, benefits. The Dharani, 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 the 써가지고 일사리에서 이 안에다가 계란을 넣다가 집어넣 넣고 그래가지고 이 수많은 수탑을 큰탑 안에다가 모셔놓는 그런 교본에 의한 건데요. 이상하게도 이 지금 담아 있는 수탑들 안에서는 구멍만 뚫려 있을 뿐 계란이가 발견된 예는 거의 보여지고 있지 않습니다. 이 기록상에는 이 언제나 이 안에다가 계란을 하나씩 집어 넣게끔 규정에는 되어 있는데 보이지는 않습니다. So here you can see a small hole at the bottom of each pagoda miniature. So, so as we single pagoda has this kind of hole. So it is always that uh, a practitioner would have uh, wrote down uh, the dharani and put the dharani inscription inside this hole. According to the prescription laid out in the sutra. But curiously enough, <laughs> no surviving examples actually uh, actual the miniature survive, not with the Dharma inscription intact. That's a big question. We initially got there, but we got in the so far, and so and these little small holes are very important in terms of creating these types of pagoda miniature. So examples from the unified Shila period, like uh, from the eighth to early uh, from the eighth to ninth century, this pagoda miniature has small holes. Those examples from the Korea period, they do not have any holes. So next, we have winter chimes. So here we have a set of uh, three small uh, uh, wind bells from the Korea period made of bronze. And uh, one interesting uh, feature of this wind chime is the sedan, uh, sedan letter. 
on the on each side of the wind chime. So here Van Jong Da shows uh, comparable images from the unified Shilla period. The very box on your left shows the two standing bodhisattvas worshiping the pagoda at the center. And the, uh, under the eaves of uh, each story of the pagoda, uh, these type of wind chimes are calm. So these wind chimes can be also called wind bells. And here is one interesting, uh, Van Zhang Lam is an interesting comparison with the tradition of inserting a bronze bell inside uh, the Buddhist statue at the level of uh, Buddha statue's throat, the neck. So that type of uh, bronze bell is called Puya, literally meaning throat bell, uh, made after the location of such a bell inside a uh, Buddha statue, so which is symbolizes the Buddha's voice, so that the, uh, the statue, just like the Buddha, can enlighten uh, people. So although these examples uh, lost already lost uh, its clapper and other parts, originally this type of wind bells ha have a flat, fishy shaped piece of metal, which causes the chime to ring when the wind blows, and the sound of the wind chime symbolizes the voice of the Buddha, which it can enlighten uh, all sentient beings. So on your right, you see a stone pagoda uh, on the PPT screen. Here you can see like small holes carved onto the, uh, the loop stone of the pagoda. And it was made for like hanging this type of wind chime. So 
So during the three kingdoms and unified the Silla period, wind bells were usually shaped cylindrical. But from the Korea period, uh, it had uh, four sides. But the different reasons why the the so our example shows very interesting difference in size. Right? So here we, you have the biggest and the, the mid, middle and the uh, smallest. And uh, think about the shape of traditional Korean pavilion that the first story is always larger and it tapers uh, all, along the top. So the bigger one was, could have been a uh, home uh, in the lowest story of the Buddha. So now we are preparing a wood plot. Yenaran,有些米安,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个
이제 지금 현재는 이러한 목판을 만들 수 있는 수단조차가 그렇게 많지가 어, 않습니다. 근데 그 얘기가 앞뒷면 그리고 이렇게 조그만한 글씨에다가 그림까지 그려져있는 목판 하나를 만들기 위해서는 그래도 적어도 한 800만 원, 900만 원 정도를 줘야 되지 않느냐 이제 그런 얘기를 들었던 적이 있었습니다. 그만큼 공력과 시간이 많이 들어가는 작업이다. 작업은 그런 얘기입니다. 네, 네. Uh, so according to the according to the carvers, uh, it is very very difficult uh, to make this kind of wood blocks. And nowadays there are only only a few carvers who can make similar wood blocks. And because it has many small characters and very sophisticated illustrations. It would cost about uh, about uh, like seven thousand and eighty something thousand dollars on this. 요 목판은 원래가 중국에서 1556년에 대원사라고 하는 절에서 애초에 이런 판을 만든 걸로 알려져 있습니다. The contents of this wood block is a Buddhist text known as Shi Shi Yuan Liu, the origin of uh, Shakyamuni, which uh, which had been originally published in China in 1556. 그런데 이 1600년도 어, 초반 임진 왜란이 끝나고서 사명대사가 우리나라의 이 왕의 사신 사절당 사신 자격으로 일본에 방문했던 적이 있었는데 그때 일본에서 이 책을 구해 가지고 선운사에서 1648년에 이 목판을 새겨 만들었다라고 하는 내용이 책에 이제 발문에 적혀 있습니다. Uh, according uh, according to the uh, colophons of this. Uh, the, the, this book made from these wood blocks. Uh, after the, after the uh, Japanese invasion of uh, Joseon, the monk, the venerable monk Samyong went to Japan and in Japan he found uh, this book, Shi Shi Ryan Liu, and then brought the book back to Korea and, uh, uh, and, and, then, uh, and then people made uh, I mean, carved a new set of wood block to, to publish the same book in the year 1647 at the monastery named Son Uninsa in Korea. 여튼, 한 350년 그량 된 아주 오래된 목판인데도 아주 고관 상태가 좋아가지고요. 지금도 어떤 깨져 있는 그런 것이 발견되지 않게끔 굉장히 단단한 단단으로 나무에다가 so this wood block is uh, is about 350 years old, but it's still in good shape, and you cannot see any like small chipping out of the uh, small characters. So we can know that the, that it was made out of very very hard and strong wood. 그러면은 이제 복한 다음에 이제 또 다른 문물을 한점 소개해드릴까 이제 문제요. 이제 다음 소개해드릴 문물은 이제 약간 도장과 관련된 내용입니다. So the next uh, object is the set of seal and its original box. 지금 이것은 도장 케이스인데요. 이걸 인신 이라고 합니다. 인신이라고 하는 것은 도장이라고 하는 말이고요. 인신을 담고 담아 대기 위한 이제 함이다 이거죠. So this is a casket uh, made for holding uh, seal. 근데 요 앞부분을 보면 거북이가 한 마리 그려져 있는 것이 발견됩니다. So here you can see a turtle. 이 거북이라고 하는 것은 몸을 짭짤하게 엎드려 있는데 곧이 왕, 앞에 엎드려 있는 신하들의 도장이 이 안에 담겨져 있는 것을 의미합니다. 
Well, the, the, the shape of pot, which he, <laughs> uh, symbolizes the humbleness. Mm -hmm. So the, the seal uh, in case inside this box uh, were made uh, for uh, the ministers to the king. 이걸 이제 눌러서 이걸 열게 되면요. 이 안에 이제 도장이 담겨져 있는데요. 와우, the seals are very heavy. <웃음> So here is a single Chinese character reading Sang, which means uh, above. So here it, it indicates the like uh, upper part of the seal. So this is a, like a knot or a graph of the seal. And here is the seal. Uh, it's the text, like six Chinese characters are carved onto the You're cell. Okay. 여기에는 지금 PPT에서 났는데요. 정수사 주지인 여섯 글자가 새겨져 있습니다. So six Chinese characters are reading 정수사 주지인, which means seal of the abbot of 정수사 temple. 정수사라고 하는 이 저런 저 강화에 있었던 아주 전통 있는 그런 절이었는데요. 정수사 was a temple located on the Kangha Island, uh, which was a temporary capital of the Korea Kingdom during the Mongol invasion in the 13th century. 그런데 이 정수사에는 조선 초기 때부터 무학대사의 제자, 예를 들어서 함허 득통선사 등등 그 제자들이 머물러 왔었던 절이었는데 아마도 그 절에다가 이 도장을 보냈던 것 같은데 음. 원래 조선 시대에는 상서원이라고 하는 기관에서 이 도장을 만들어서 배부하는 것이 원칙이었었습니다. So many eminent monks, such as Ham Ho Duk Tong, who was a disciple of the Master Muha. Uh, Master Muha was a teacher uh, for the founder of Joseon Dynasty. So, like uh, these many eminent monks were resided at Chong Su Sa Temple. And during the Joseon Dynasty, it was it was a tradition that a government office called Sang Sa Wan. Uh, meaning Bureau for Auspicious Signs. Uh, this bureau administered uh, loyal sales and uh, like things related to sales and these like signs. And the Joseon court uh, had made sales and distributed them to like important temples. So this government bureau, Sang Sa Wan, they were very good at keeping records. So when they made sales, they like uh, stamped the seals and uh, left records of their seals like this. 근데 이렇게 배부를 하는데 도장마다 크기가 다른데요. 지금 so, 이 도장 같은 경우에 있어서는 지금 이것은 또 다른 도장인데요. 크기가 비교해 보면은 상당히 큰걸알수 있습니다. So here uh, from the page, you can see the difference between the size of the two seals. This is just one example. And this seal has very, uh, this seal is of considerable size. 예를 들어서 이것만 해도 지금 여기보다도 굉장히 크죠? 
근데 지금 여기보다도 더 커요. 이게. And this one is even bigger. 근데 이 조선 시대에는 도장의 크기에 규범이 있습니다. 그래서 그 규범에 따라 가지고 예를 들어서 이 일급 공무원, 이급 공무원, 삼급 공무원마다 도장의 크기가 정해져 있었습니다. So during the Joseon Dynasty, there was there was very strict rule or regulation regarding the size of seals. So the government officials, uh, they according to, in accordance with their lengths, they have uh, like different sizes. Uh, they have seals of different sizes. So higher officials have bigger seals. 근데 지금 요 이것이 요 도장은 이 정이품 정도의 이 관리가 갖고 있는 도장의 사이즈인데 이 정수사 주지는 이것보다도 어, 도장의 크기가 더큰 것을 볼 수가 있어서 이것은 이 정부에서 어떤 정수사라고 하는 그절 자체가 그만큼 위상이 높았고 정수사 주지라고 하는 그러한 직책 자체가 대단했던 것이구나 라고 하는 것을 또한 알수 있게 합니다. So this is seal. This is not belong. Uh, this doesn't belong to the like Buddhist temple or Buddhist monk. This was uh, uh, like bestowed upon a high government official, and this is quite big already. But this uh, seal of the abbot of Chongsusa is even bigger. This seal. Well, so the difference in size uh, may indicate that the prestige or like the power or prominence of the Chongsusa temple during the time. 이제 도장에 대해서는 이만하고요. 또 다른 용어를 하나를 어, 소개 드리고자 합니다. 이제 수, 뭐, 스님들이 쓰는 이제 모자인데요. 그 모자 가운데서 지금 이것은 아주 특이한 예가 어, 됩니다. Well, this is the last object of uh, that we will show, and this is the object that Susie's student chose. Ah, 소리가 좀 작다는데요. 아 그래가지고 제가 이걸 바꿔보기. 예. This is uh, a Buddhist hat that were used for Buddhist rituals. 지금 이 밑에는 제 얼굴을 만들어 놓은 그냥 <웃음> 상이고요. Well, uh, he put this hat on this uh, uh, how to say sculpture, uh, which is his own, own face. 근데 지금 여기에 이 모자가 있고 모자 위에 이 꼭대기에 탑이 또한 만들어져 있는 아주 특이한 형태를 지금 현재까지 한국에서도 이러한 예가 발견되었던 예가 없었던 아주 특이한 유물이라고 할수 있습니다. This is a unique type of hat remaining in Korea. On, on the top, it has a miniature pagoda made of paper. 근데 이러한 예가 이 중국 쪽의 예 의하게 될것 같으면은 이제 수륙제 등등 의식을 행할 지게 그 의식 승리 모자에다가 이러한 것을 쓰고 있는 그림들이 담아 있는 예가 있거든요. 아마도 이 수륙제와도 관련된 형태의 모자였을 음. 것이다 생각할 수 있습니다. Based on some Chinese Buddhist painting, we can infer that this type of head uh, was probably used for uh, rituals such as water land ritual. 그리고 이 모자 위에 보게 될것 같으면은 이 가운데 중심으로 해서 양 옆에 각각 이제 불상이 두 부처님의 거기 각각 이제 두 분씩 총 다섯 명의 다섯 부처님들이 지금 여기에 그림이 그려져 있는 것을 발견할 수가 있습니다. On the five panels of this hat, we can see uh, painted uh, five directional Buddhas. 네, 그런 맥락에서 오방불을 모셔놓은 관이다라고 해서 오방불관이라고 말할 수가 있습니다. Um, so he named this hat uh, 
five directional Buddha's head. 근데 지금 여기 오강불 같은 경우에 있어서는 이 모자 위에다가 각각의 이 불화를 종이에다가 그려가지고 천으로 만든 모자 위에다가 여기다가 매달아 놓은 그런 형태로서 조성이 돼 있거든요. 그러니까 지금 오방불은 종이에다가 그려놓은 불화이다 이거죠. 그런데 이 불화의 양태를 보게 될것 같으면 은 이것은 향락 없이 기법적인 측면에서 걸치게는 18세기 말경에 보여지는 불화의 요소가 이 안에 담겨져 있는 것을 한국 불화의 요소가 담겨져 있는 것이 발견이 됩니다. The five Buddhas were painted on piece of paper, and then they were pasted on this uh, textile hat. Uh, and based on the style of these uh, painted Buddhas, we can know that uh, the hat was probably made around the late 18th century. 어찌됐건 지금 현재까지 이러한 유형의 유물이 발견된 적은 없지만 여기에 담겨져 있는 이 불화의 어떤 이 제작 기법 그리고 시대성 등등을 통해 가지고 볼지게 이것은 앞으로 차후 중요한 연구 과제 가운데 하나다라고 하는 것을 말할 수가 있습니다. Because this is a unique case. Uh, and it has many characteristic, uh, how do you say, uh, making methods such as usage of twisted threads and other things. So it remains as our uh, future study to know, to better know about its function. Ah, 선생님 여기까지 하시고 일단 시간이 많이 지나가서요. 네, 그래요. 그러면은 그거는 잠깐 보여주시고 네. 워크숍 끝나고. 네. 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 
questions because before when people are in their rooms right they won't be able to uh you know get any more information from you guys at least for a bit so perhaps uh people might have some questions or things they want to bring up all together and then we can maybe clarify some of that and then get into the uh, chat rooms or whatever they're called okay very good yeah I, I like that idea. So are there any questions? Anyone? Any simple questions will be welcomed too. Or complicated questions are fine too. <laughs> <laughs> Jai has a question. Um, thank you so much for, thank you so Go much ahead. for the uh, presentation and also for the um, introduction of of such variety of materials. Um, I'm just wondering for the um, for the Choson Side Bukjang and also for the pagodas, um, how were the text and also the Bukjang enshrined into the object? Like were they just put in there or was there anything to seal them um, at the opening? So like just the I guess the condition of um of the discovery of the objects, like how were how were the things put into there and like how were they sealed? Yeah, thank you. Okay, very good. Uh, 그 다란이 같은 게 이제 복장에서 발견이 됐었잖아요. 근데 원상태에서는 어떻게 그 안에 들어 어떤 형태로 들어가 있었는지 조금 알고 싶다고 하네요. 네. 그러니까. 보통 복장 안에다가 그걸 집어넣을 뭐 백장, 200장씩 이 두루마리 그걸 갖다가 막 돌돌 말아가지고요. 아니면은 그냥 접어가지고 어떤 복장 안에 구석구석 빈 자리에다가 이 드라니를 집어넣는 그런 경우가 많이 있습니다. 그래서 이 드라니라고 하는 것이 사람들이 생각하기에 따라서는 이제 남는 공간을 메꾸기 위한 충정용이다 라고 그렇게 얘기할 정도로 성스러운 물건인데 왜 그런 걸 갖다가 겨우 어떤 남는 공간을 채워넣기 위한 그런 용도로서 사용되었던 예가 많이 보여집니다. Uh, well, sometimes just one Buddhist statue uh, included or was enshrined with hundreds of Tarani prints and they were often used as kind of space filler uh, so that other, other precious things enshrined in the statue does not, um, how to say, does not move. So you can, you might wonder why such uh, precious, uh, how to say, Tarani was used as space filler, uh, but it also has very sim important symbolic meaning as we re mm -hmm. religious objects. And uh, if you want to know more about it, you can read articles in the uh, special issue on Pokja mm -hmm. on Gaia de Extremaze, which was published uh, last year, 2019. 2019. <laughs> um, oh, so uh, as the venerable monk Chongga explained, because they were used as kind of space filler, uh, they were, how to say, they were like a squeezed mm -hmm. <laughs> and so then they were usually the uh, deeply implanted right. uh, inside right. like such parts like mm -hmm. necks or like knees. Mm -hmm. So it just looked like packing materials, but mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> that's the condition of these Tarani prints uh, in their initial like right. in Shrai. Right. But after you take out the Dharan is out of the statue, you can you can go to restoration. Mm -hmm. And as the Venerable of Monk Chongga explained to us before, uh, the traditional mulberry paper has uh, has special texture. So if you keep it in the open space for a long time, the mm -hmm. wrinkles and pores will naturally, how to say, uh, will be naturally uh, gone. They were the original, how to say, status inside the statue. I have a question or two, maybe. Uh, first, the well, first, thanks very much for this. This was so fascinating. Uh, really a great opportunity for all of us. 
Um, but with thinking about the seals, the two uh, seals that you showed us in the seal box, specifically the box, do you, is there, do we know, do you know where the box was kept in the, in the temple, in the monastery? Was there just where was it kept or do we know? Mm-hmm. Uh, 일단 뭐 오늘 이 설명해 주신 것에 대해서 너무나 감사드리고요. 많이 배울 수 있어서 너무 기뻤다 이런 말씀해 주셨고 그 인장 도장 오늘 보여주셨는데 그거랑 같이 특히 이 정수사 주지인은 이제 함이랑 같이 있는데 어, 실제 사찰에서 이 인장 함 같은 것이 어떤 공간에 보관됐을지 저희가 아는 것이 있는지 보관 장소 같은 것에 대해서 더 궁금하다고. 예, 보통 이제 예, 주지가 앉아 있으면요. 이제 조선 후기의 사진 자료에 의하게 될것 같으면은 이제 어떤 입식 이 어떤 이런 의자에 앉아 가지고 의자에 턱걸이 요 정도 위치에 왼쪽에다가 요 인신함 걸 갖다가 딱 닫아놓은 일종의 권위의 어떤 상징 그런 개념으로 이게 작용을 하더라. 이제 조선 후기의 사진 자료에 의하면. 그러면은 뭐 실제 뭐 사찰에 뭐 주지실에 보관을 했다거나 네, 그런 구체적인 정보 그건 이제 어뭐 그거야 당연히 보관했겠지만은 주지가 어 사진을 찍었던 사진 자료에 의하면은 네, 네. 의자에 다 감고 의자의 음. 왼쪽에 턱걸이 부분 음, 음. 왼쪽에 요 자리에 딱 놓여 있고 어요 음. 정도도 피해도에 있으면서 음. 상대방 눈에 다 보여지게끔 네, 이건 뭐냐면 네. 일종의 주지인 이것은 네. 정부에서 데려온 도장이잖아요 음. 일종의 권위의 네. 어떤 상징으로 음. 이게 쓰여졌다. Well, uh, venerable uh, monk Chongak says, uh, it is hard to know where in the monastery this kind of seals were originally kept. But here, uh, but we do have some photographs from the late 19th or early 20th century, some type of like portrait of the abbots. Uh, in this type of portraits, the uh, abbot usually sits uh, on a chair and uh, to the left of the armrest, uh, the seal box is usually uh, put together, uh, usually placed on the table. So it is a well established uh, symbol of authority and power of the abbot. Yeah. Great. Thank you. That's interesting. Um, well, since no one else is jumping up, I'll, I have another one. And the answer to this is probably no, but is there any sense that the Dharani prints? were stamped, that is not, not, uh, not block printed, right? Block printing, of course, as you said, right? There's the, you put the block down, you put the ink on it, you put the paper and you rub. Um, stamping is, is more like this. Um, is there any possibility that, that they were stamped? I mean, do, we, do you have the, the blocks or the stamps for those? Thank you. 여기 오늘 보여주신 건다 목판 인쇄한 다란인데요. 혹시 도장으로 찍은 다란이 또 있는지 궁금하다고. 네, 저기. 어, 저기 아, 그 이렇게 하프 다란. 어, 오케이, 나, 오케이. <웃음> well, he just said, yes, it is. <웃음> he actually showed, yeah. So he has an album of Darani prints over there. So he's like looking for. He will, uh, he will bring yeah, examples yeah. of stamped okay, He has a whole like, collection of Dharani prints. <laughs> the album is right there. He's the opening of the album. Sure, sure. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, exactly the same Tarani, so it was probably stamped. Like yeah, yeah. Okay. That's really great. <laughs> All right, I got stamps on my brain here. So. <laughs> oh, and the stamp was probably made of wood. Yeah. Wow, thank you. That's very, very interesting to me. All right, somebody else. (laughs) 
please, Chris Rowe. Hi, um, thank you. I have a really simple question um, and I may have missed the answer, but I'm just wondering what kind of wood the large wood block you showed us was made out of. Because it's really, really hard. <coughs> it's probably the Korean pear tree you know the fruit pear and then korean pear is uh has round shape and uh, the its wood is really strong it's a really hard thank you for your question is there a special significance to that wood or just it's hard it's a hard wood Shanghang 그 다음에 피나무, 참중나무, 뭐 그런 것들. So I was asking uh, Ben Jongga, so besides pear tree, what types of, what kinds of trees were used for making wood blocks? And he said, uh, Jelkova tree, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> uh, uh, so the alum. Uh, Elm tree were used, um, and uh, like a couple of other trees were used for making wood blocks. But the harder the wood is, uh, is more difficult to carve. So <laughs> there is two sides <laughs> of the object. So, so he says that as for the Korean pear tree, it was chosen because of its, its hardness uh, rather than its symbolic meaning. Mm -hmm. Great. 그거는 그건 내가 천중나무인가 내가 기억이 안 나요. Do you have any? I have a question. Go ahead, whoever you are. Yo Hong Ro. Yeah, yeah, I have a question. No. Hi, hi, Sujin. Um, so thank you for the lecture. I have a question about the seal. So you mentioned that the seal was made by the government and so that means the the abbot of the abbot of the temple was also appointed by the government or, and then also you mentioned that the seal was pretty big that means it's really the the position was really important that means the the, the i just want to wondering the 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 temple called jongsusa the importance of the the temple itself. So, yeah, that's my question. Sungwagoshi 바로 어, 주지 임명을 갖다 받을 수 있는 자격을 부여했단 말이에요. 이제 그러한 전통이 
계속 남아 있었고 임진왜란 이후에도 이제 정부에서 그때는 승과고시는 없었지만은 그 전통을 그대로 이제 스님들한테 어, 뭐 어떤 도승통 등등 음. 어떤 승대장 그런 등등의 주기를 갖다 주면서 산성 수호의 역할을 하면서 그 권위를 내려주기 위해서 부장들을 갖다가 지급을 했던 겁니다. 승과고시. So per your first question, uh, Ben Jonggak answered that uh, during the Korea period and during the Joseon until the early 17th century, there were uh, state exams for monks. So once uh, monks uh, passed these exams, he was entitled, uh, he bestowed certain ranks and he were uh, qualified to be appointed as the abbot of a temple. So this system existed until the early 17th century. So even after the 17th century, uh, after the abolition of the state exam for monks, um, honorary titles for monks were still there. So uh, the government uh, bestowed these honorary titles to uh, eminent monks and they like, Uh, bestowed this type of seals to these monks. And I, I didn't actually get your second question. Uh, can you? Uh... Yeah, the, the, my question, the second question is the, the, the temple called Jongsusa, the importance of the temple is a, it was a really important temple or? The... Okay, uh, thank you. 정수사가 네. 얼마나 중요한 사찰이었는지 알수 있는지 지금 저기 강화에 가면 지금도 정수사가 있잖아요. 그런데 함허 득통 선사가 거기에 살았었죠 조선 초기에 네. 함허 득통이 부학대사에 바로 접법 제자란 말이에요. 그리고 그 함허 득통의 제자가 신미 수미 뭐 그쪽 음. 계열이에요. 그러니까 조선 시대 최고의 어떤 권력과 더불어 가지고 영향력과 또한 학문적인 그러한 어떤 주축이 되었던 곳이 정수산 거예요. 아마 음. 이제 그러한 어떤 조선 이, 예, 그러한 그래. 관련성이 있을 것. 그럼 조선 시대 초기 뭐 전기까지도 예, 굉장히 그쵸. 중요성 확인이 되는 사찰. 그러니까 적어도 어 저기 성명종 이 광해군 이전까지는 그 정도의 어떤 권위를 네, 갖고 네. 있었던 자리죠. 네. So, uh, the Jongsusa temple. So, there is still uh, a temple uh, with the same name on the Kanghua Island. And during the early years of the Joseon dynasty, eminent monks who were very close to kings and uh, lawyer, uh, the members of the royal court, such as uh, monk uh, Hamo Duktong, or Simmi, or Sumi, all these monks were very close to the uh, throne and they were very uh, uh, renowned for their like uh, Buddhist learning. So there was this lineage of important monks who resided at Jongsusa until the early 17th century. So, and even after the uh, 17th century, the temple uh, prospered uh, in the Kangwa Island. So <laughs> that, that's uh, Mong Jongdak's uh, answer to your question. And thank you for the question. Thank you. You can, you can also ask questions in Korean and you can also ask to show the details of the objects if, if you want to see the objects more. There is a question. Sure. Hello, uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, I'm, I understand that these uh, artifacts belong to the Temple Museum. So uh, it is very interesting to know how you know, the objects were previously used. But I'm wondering if you, if you can talk about how these objects are being used now, you know, uh, if any. That is, um, are the uh, artifacts uh, like kept in the museum permanently? Or um, do the temple actually bring them up, you know, to participate in the, let's say, the rituals of the temple? You know, uh, I'm looking at, like, for instance, the... Um, The, the ritual hat that you have and uh, it, it, you know, it was placed on the model of the, of the venerable. So uh, can you talk about like, how does the temple view these uh, historical artifacts and perhaps also their current roles 
in the let's say the life of the temple uh, and in more in general in Korean Buddhism. Thank you. Thank you. So, 오늘 이렇게 이런 그 유물들이 과거에 어떻게 사용이 됐는지 잘 설명을 해주셨는데요. 혹시 지금 소장하고 있는 물건 중에 지금도 사용을 실제 하시는 곳이 혹시라도 있는지 그리고 지금 이제 소장하시는 것들은 이 성모 박물관에 이제 영구에 소장된 작품들인지 뭐 그런 이제 스님은 이제 불교를 실제 이제 행하시는 분이시잖아요. 그런 점에서 이제 스님의 시각으로서는 이런 유물들을 어떻게 보시는지 뭐 알고 싶다고 합니다. 여하튼 저는 어, 원래는 대학을 가톨릭 대학의 신학을 저, 졸업을 해서 어, 신부가 되려고 했었다가 제 동창들은 어, 전부 다 이제 지금 신부들이거든요. 근데 어찌됐건 이제 저는 절에 들어와 가지고 그동안 한이 유물, 불교 유물을 갖다가 하나씩 하나씩 모은 지가 한 25년 정도가 된것 같습니다. 그러니까 25년 동안 이 하나씩 하나씩 모으다 보니까는 그것이 벌써 2,500점 정도가 되는 것 같은데요. 그렇게 중요한 유물들, 이제 다 역사적인 어떠한 유물들이죠. 유물 개념. 그렇기 때문에 역사적인 유물이기 때문에 필요한 경우에 있어서는 잠깐 그것이 사용될 수는 있겠지만은 유물의 손상이 가서는 안 되기 때문에 그냥 고의 좀 모셔놓고 연구 자료로서는 그걸 활용하고 있는 그런 상황이 됩니다. 그리고 차후에 이제 그런 걸 어떤 제대로 이제 격이 있는 박물관 같은 걸 만들어서 전시를 하고 연구를 하고 할 예정이 있습니다. 네. 그 스님께서 소장하신 불경 같은 경우는 이렇게 영인분을 만드셔가지고 음. 또 공덕을 쌓고 싶어 하는 네. 분들이나 또 이렇게 연구 자료로서도 활용하시잖아요. 그렇죠. 그 부분도 선생님이 좀 설명해 주세요. 네. 그 부분 끝에 스님 <웃음> 선생님 그러면은 예. 어, uh, the banner of monk Jonga has a lot of a unique courage, uh, I mean, career. Uh, when he was, uh, I mean, he went to a Catholic university and he originally majored in theology. So many of his friends are now uh, Christian priests. Uh, and he began to collect these objects 25 years ago. And he has, uh, he has been collected about 12, uh, 2,500 objects. And he thinks that these are very precious cultural, cultural relics, uh, very important objects to uh, preserve. Uh, and because uh, these objects became his museum collection now, uh, he only very, very rarely use them for uh, practical use uh, usage. Uh, so rather than actually use them, he, he now thinks that they should be used for, uh, how to say, data for future study. And he plans to build, uh, how to say, like a, a bigger uh, museum building, possibly starting from next year. Uh, so. Um, uh, when you come to Korea in the future, I hope that, I mean, I hope that you will be able to <laughs> see those objects mm -hmm. at, at a new museum building founded by a venerable monk, Jonga. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. to, to add some explanations about the like use of these uh, objects. Uh, so he, although he like preserve these historical artifacts safe, uh, like for Buddhist sutra, some of the Buddhist, uh, important Buddhist sutra, he had made replicas of them uh, to distribute or give them to his uh, followers, like Buddhist followers. Mm -hmm. And they want to have some like replica of this important Buddhist text, like to study the text or like to just have them at their home like, for other things. So that's one kind of like reuse of this historical uh, text. 
And uh, the banner of Monk Jungkook says that in the future, if you want to uh, use his collection for your study, uh, he welcomes all of you to his museum. He'll be very happy to uh, show the object for your study. I see one of one of my undergraduate wonderful students. M has a question. Sure. Hi, good morning or evening. I guess it's morning here in Sackville. Um, so we as a group chose to ask about the hat, the Buddhist red hat. And you had mentioned that the pictures are pasted on. We were just wondering why they're pasted on as opposed to painting directly on the fabric. Okay, very good question. 이 천에다가 바그 그리지 않고 음. 왜 종이에 그려서 붙였는지 왜냐면은 어, 이제 모자가 들어오지면은 그 종이 부분을 뜯어 가지고 음. 이제 천은 빨아서 다시 쓰고 다시 붙여서 또 쓰는 거. Oh, there is a very interesting reason. Uh, when you use the head for a while, it gets dirty, right? Then you can take off the uh, the painted Buddhas, and then you can wash the textile hat, and then you can reattach the painted Buddhas on it. So it has very practical reason mm -hmm. for that. Thank you for your question. Maybe just to follow up to that, are there other kinds of objects that are like that, that have removable uh, components? Ah, 혹시 소장하고 있는 유물들 중에 이렇게 뭐 뗐다 붙였다 뭐 그런 것들이 yeah. 있는 유물이 yeah. 있는지 혹시 예시가 있는지 가사 가사요 가사. 지금 얼른 가져 아 네네 well he talks about monk's flow of kasaya and he's going to pick it up on the second floor of the building so he will be back with another example of such like uh, yeah, he says that the uh, monk's robe has some detachable version <laughs> of it. He's so generous. <laughs> yeah. So just as a point of the program here, we're actually about 10 minutes from the official ending. So maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe we'll just keep on going like this. And, <laughs> oh, yeah. So get me. Oh. Um, what do you want to do? Yeah, we have to do this, but it's a bit difficult to do this. Because of the, uh, the limitation of the time, I think we better keep this Q&A uh, format until mm -hmm. the end of the workshop, I guess. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Let's take a look at the dress. 입었다가 네. 이제 빨, 빨아가지고 이것만 이것만 띄어서 빨고 그냥 이것만 띄어서 빨아가지고 다시 이 자리에 붙이는 거예요. 음. 이것도 이제 가사인데 검자 <웃음> 이것도 이제 띄어서 옷을 빨아서 이 자리에다가 또 붙여서 음. 이렇게 쓰고 하는 거. 这是一个蒙斯罗，跟这是一个蒙斯罗，跟这是一个蒙斯罗，跟这是一个蒙斯罗，跟这是一个蒙斯罗，跟这是一个蒙斯罗，跟这是一个蒙斯罗，跟这是
범페이 최고 권위자 네. 어장만이 십바라밀 네. 정진도가 네. 새겨져 있는 요카사를 아, 입어요. 정진도? 십바라밀도. 네. 아, 아, 도, 도가 무슨 도자였어요? 그림, 그림. 아, 그림. 십바라밀 그림. These patterns are ten <웃음> paramitas. And a monk, uh, I mean, the most excellent monk, I mean, who is who is an expert of Pompe, a special Buddhist music, can wear this kind of robe with this uh, patterns of ten patterns. 지금 한국에 이거 하나밖에 발견이 안 됐어. 오, 그렇군요. This is the only example of uh, this type of, uh, I mean. Uh, the, this is the only rock with this ten parameter pattern uh, in, in uh, embroidery. I know that there, uh, here, I mean, in this workshop, there are quite a few students of mine. <laughs> so I want you to ask a question too. So you can ask a question in Korean. <웃음> 지원 씨 계세요? 아니면 황수연 씨? <웃음> 질문 해주세요. 음, 교수님 안녕하세요. 저 질문 있는데요. 네. 아, 네. <웃음> 네, 안녕하세요. 저는 이대에서 지금 수업 듣고 있는 1학기 우승이라고 합니다. 우선은 저는 그 부적, 그 다란이로 적혀져 있는 그 부적에 좀 관심이 많았었는데 이 부적 같은 경우에 어 이게 선호 관계가 어떻게 되는지 궁금했어요. 그러니까 예를 들면 이제 일반 사람들이 뭔가 그런 매지컬하고 메디컬 트리트먼트로 효험을 좀 바라가는 관점에서 이게 유행해서 이제 그 사찰 차원에서 찍어서 이제 배포가 된 건지 아니면 원래 사찰 차원에서 뭔가 의식 같은 데 행하던 부적이 일반인들에게 유명해져가지고 이게 오히려 약간 일반인들이 퍼진 건지 아니면 이게 뭐 부적마다 좀 효험이 달라가지고 이렇게 첫 번째가 된 경우도 있고 두 번째가 된 경우도 있고 뭐 이렇게 종류가 다양한 건지 그 부분이 조금 궁금했습니다. 불자들이 먼저 원해서 이렇게 만든 건지 아니면 사찰에서 먼저 만든 건지 뭐 그런 게 궁금하시다는 말씀이시네요. 네, 맞습니다. 음, 부적과 관련돼서는 이 불캅 교수님께서도 논문을 쓰신 것을 어, 본 적이 있는데요. 이 돈황 동굴 아, 다란이 좀 포함해서 물어본 것 같습니다. 예, 예, 예. 이제 다란이와 이제 어떤 부적 어, 그런 것들이 이 아주 일찌감치 도낭 동굴 사원의 안에서 발견되고 있는데 돈황이라고 하는 그 지역은 수많은 사람들의 여행객들이 잠시 잠시 거쳐가는 곳이고 그러다 보니까는 수많은 이제 내왕객들 수많은 정보들이 모여지는 그리고 새로운 유행들이 언제나 퍼져가는 기점 역할을 갖다가 했을 것 같습니다. 근데 거기에서 이제 부적 등등이 또한 일찌감치부터 발견이 되고 있거든요. 그래가지고 이 어떤 약이 6세기, 5세기, 6세기 경부터 이 부적이라고 하는 것이 불교 안에서 상당히 이제 유행을 갖다 하지, 하지 않았겠느냐. 또한 이 다라니 역시도, 이 다라니 같은 경우에 있어서는 이제 6세기, 7세기, 불공, 금강지, 그런 등등의 일단 밀교승들이 이제 이 어떤 남방 해상항로를 거쳐가지고 이제 중국에 이 단방의 어떤 밀교를 갖다가 전하게 되면서 이 드라니 같은 것들이 이 동남아시아 일대 굉장히 넓게 퍼졌던 예가 있었거든요. 근데 그러한 것들이 결국은 이제 바닷길에 항해 있어서의 어떤 이 안녕, 어, 무사함 또는 이 일, 어, 보통 사람들의 어떤 이, 이 평상시에 어떤 삶의 어떤 행복, 
이제 그러한 소소한 그런 것들을 갖다가 담고 있는 염원을 담고 있다 이거죠. 그래서 그러한 것들이 아마도 그 지역의 어떤 민간 신앙과 결부돼가지고서는 차츰 차츰 어떤 변형도 되고 거쳐가면서 새로운 것들이 추가가 되면서 그런 식으로 전해져 오지 않았을까 이제 그러한 생각이 듭니다. 지금도 어, 우리나라에 있어서는 이 변형된 테라니 그러한 것들이 지금도 이 무당들이 사용하기도 하고 그러거든요. 이 거, 거기에도 이 불교의 형태가 조금 남아있는데 변형이 돼서 사용되고 그래요. 보면은. 네. 어. Well, I will just very briefly uh, summarize what uh, what the venerable monk j o n g a k just said. Can you also repeat the question? We didn't in English, we didn't get the question that we, I didn't. Know. <laughs> uh, well, she wanted to she wanted to know uh, how to say the sequence. I mean, how the people began to use the uh, talismanic seals and tarani uh, uh, in Buddhism. She wanted to know whether the monks uh, started to use them first or the ordinary people. Had the need first, and uh, the venerable the venerable monk s o n g a k says that as Professor p o r k a p also studied, uh, we can see only traces of talismanic seals in Dunhuang manuscripts, which were later transmitted uh, to Korea. And as for Tarani, as we know, uh, the esoteric Buddhist monks such as uh, a m u g a p a s r a and other monks. Widely uh, spread the uh, usage of Tarani in medieval China, uh, which was also transmitted to Korea. Um, but what is interesting is that the Taranis became localized, uh, and more and more ordinary people also began to use Buddhist Taranis and talismanic seals. So today. You can see that even shamans in Korea use Buddhist tarani and Buddhist uh, Buddhist talismans. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Ah, 아, 교수님, 저도 이제 질문. <웃음> 네. 요 네. 네. 안녕하세요. 이화여자 대학원에서 수학하고 있는 지원이라고 합니다. 어, 저는 이제 일단 궁금한 질문이 두 가지가 있는데요. 먼저 첫 번째로 통일신라 시대의 토재소탑들을 몇 개를 보여주셨는데 이 토재소탑들이 어떤 탑 내부에서 출토가 된 것인지 궁금합니다. 아니면 네, 어디서 따로 발견된 것인지도 궁금하고요. 그리고 두 번째로 이제 오방불관에 대해서 보여주셨었는데 오방불관과 그 위에 얹어져 있는 소탑이 어떻게 돼서 하나의 세트로 이렇게 전승이 되고 있는지 그래서 그 연유에 대해서도 여쭙고 싶습니다. 음, 수륙제와 관련된 수륙회도가 우리나라에는 거의 없는데요. 중국에 예, 간간이 조금 남아있는 자료가 조금 있습니다. 예, 중국의 수륙제와 관련된 아, 그림 에 의하게 거기에 보게 될것 같으면 은 거기에도 아까와 같은 그런 형태와 뭐, 뭐 꼭대기에 탑이 얹어져 있는 그런 모자를 쓰고 있는 그러한 유형의 그림 같은 것이 중국에서는 전해지고 있는 것이 보이거든요. 근데 국내에서는 그런 이해가 없는데 근데 아마도 이러한 것은 이제 중국의 그런 어떤 그림을 갖다가 보고 이게 이 일반적으로 통영이 되었다라기보다는 그런 그림의 모티브를 얻어가지고 그려놓은 그냥 특별한 어떤 남아있는 예 가운데 하나이지 않겠느냐 이제 그 정도의 어떤 생각이 듭니다. 수륙제와 관련된 것이다라고 한 것만은 조금 이제 확정 조금 신빙성이 있어 보이고요. 아까 그 통신이나 소탑은 어느 나라에서이 아, 소탑 그것은 사실 우리나라에는 지금 현재 전해져 있는 유물들이 어디에서 발견이 되었다라고 하는 그러한 근거가 명확한 것들이 많지가 않습니다. 그냥 떠돌아다니는 그런 형태 국립중앙박물관에 가더라도 어디에서 그 발굴이 되었다 이제 그렇게 정확하게 연기되어 있는 것은 그렇게 많지가 않아요. 
그렇기 때문에 상당히 중요한 유물임에도 불구하고 그 가치를 갖다가 인정받지 못한 채 있는 유물들도 굉장히 많고 그러거든요. 예를 들어서 이제 저 청동기 시대의 어떤 유물들 가운데 발굴지가 명확하다면은 그것은 바로 보물로 지정을 갖다가 하기도 하는데 지금 다음 전래되고 있는 거의 모든 유물들이 발굴지가 미상이거든요. 그렇기 때문에 그 중요한 유물들이 유물로서의 어떤 대접을 받지 못하고 연구 대상에서조차도 제외가 되고 그런 경우가 상당히 많은 것 같습니다. 음. Well, the, uh, thank you for the excellent two questions and to answer the first question, 아, uh, the, the first 먼저. question. <웃음> So let me uh, just briefly uh, translate the question first. Uh, the first question is about the provenance of this clay miniature pagoda. So she asked if uh, Mong Songak uh, knows uh, which pagoda uh, these miniatures were originally enshrined. <laughs> so, well, the answer is that the Unfortunately, the provenance is unknown, not just for these uh, pagoda miniatures, many of the known examples of this type of objects, uh, they were um, uh, illegally found or like accidentally found. So most of them, the, the provenance is unknown. So that's the answer to the first question. And <laughs> and the second question is about the, 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 this intriguing five uh, Buddha crown. So the, the, the five Buddha crown has this uh, head part with the uh, paper pagoda on top of it. And she asked how these two separate components <laughs> uh, uh, incorporated into one set. Uh, that, that was the question. And uh, Ben Jonggak answered that. Uh, so he found a, a similar example uh, in a waterland paintings from China. So he didn't actually talk about the, the which painting it was, uh, but he uh, so encountered similar example in Chinese paintings of water and land assembly, but there are few uh, surviving examples of water and land paintings in Korean Buddhist traditions. He was uh, wondering, so... So it is not clear whether this tradition was also followed in Korea, like in China, but uh, they surmise that uh, this is kind of like unique singular case inspired by this Chinese tradition of uh, this type of five with the crown, probably used in the water and land assembly. And here, uh, young, uh, Dr. Kim is tries to show how these two parts are actually physically connected. Before he showed us how these two were combined together, if you see inside the pagoda, you can see there is a uh, uh, lotus uh, shape, how do you say this, uh, lotus shaped part, and then you can place uh, this pagoda into it and then you can tie it around you can tie the lotus flower peters with the red string that you see here then you can you can how to say fix it on the on the on the top of the head head like this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's another question. Um, yes. 
Hi, um, thank you for, for the very interesting lecture. Um, I just have a question on um, number seven, the Derani in the shape of a svastika. Uh, actually, thank you so much for showing that. <laughs> that was actually um, a very good choice. And um, uh, I was fascinated actually by the shape of this Derani. Um, I'm not an art historian, uh, um, I'm, I'm very far away, unfortunately, from uh, Buddhist art. So my question might sound really simple, but I was just wondering if um, this shape, like in the shape of a swastika, is it something usual for a Dharani for that time? Like, so this is like a specimen of many similar, maybe examples we have from that time, or is this something like more peculiar, something more unique? Because in my very narrow experience with with uh, pictorial Buddhist art, I usually see Dharanis or um, other types of figurative art shaped in circles or maybe tapestries in rectangular shapes or in squares, but never in the shape of a swastika. So um, yeah, that's, that was my, my question. Thank you for your question. 아까 그 이제 스와스티카 문은 다라니를 보여주셨는데요. 만자형 다라니. 네, 만자형. 네. 되게 특이하다고 모양이 혹시 이 시기에 이제 비슷한 또 다른 스와스티카 만자형 다라니들이 많이 있었는지. 만자형 다라니는 지금까지 그거 빨간 넣고요. 네, 저 의상 스님이 써놓은 법성계 아, 저것이 이제 그 도상 위에다가 이제 글자를 갖다가 배열을 해놓고 있죠. 네. 음. Well, as for as for Taranis, the example that you uh, he showed today is the only example mm -hmm. that we have found so far. No other Tarani were was uh, made in swastika shape among the survive, uh, surviving ones. But in the Korean tradition, a very uh, important uh, I would say text made in the shape of swastika mm -hmm. is. Uh, Popsong Kata, uh, written by a uh, very famous Korean monk, Uisang. Uh, and that Kata is a short summary of uh, the Hua Yan Jing or the, uh, the, the Avatamsaka Sutra. And the monk Uisang made a uh, summary of it. I mean, compo uh, summary of it composed in the shape of uh, Kata or short verse in the 7th century, and the kata was written in the shape of swastika. Thank you very much. This was really interesting. Well, I think that we're over time, um, and this has been really great. I, I wonder if, uh, the, if, if the Venerable Jungkook had, might have some closing comments for us. Um, ก็เพิ่มมาสมมุติครับพี่สนิมเกสเพิ่มมาสมเพิ่มมาสมมาสมมาสมมาสมมาสมมาสมมาสมมาสมมาสมมาสมมาสมมาสมมาสมมาสม
wonderful to have this type of workshop over the Zoom. Uh, and we have like this course and uh, examine this object together. And I have received uh, very important questions and uh, my, uh, my, I myself uh, I could think about uh, like new uh, aspects of the object uh, in my collection. And I was very happy to meet uh, those who are in America and Canada and other states over the gym. And I was very like grateful to have this opportunity to share insights together with the uh, participants of the workshop. And I hope that uh, this workshop uh, could have been uh, you know, like a uh, uh, help to for uh, those who are here for future study, and I would like to thank uh, um, uh, Dr. Andrews and Dr. Cobb and Dr. Kim and uh, <laughs> Dr. Lee, <laughs> and for like having this workshop and all the other like uh, uh, staffs and uh, people who made this uh, workshop uh, possible. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much, Venerable <laughs> And Paul and Susie, thank you so much for waking up so early in the morning <laughs> for the workshop. <laughs> yeah. Thanks to both of you. And thanks to so everyone. Great. Thank you. And there were a few students who wanted to show more of sets. So if you uh, have time to remain in the Zoom, we can show more of sets that you requested. So anyone who wants to see more, you can stay a little bit longer. Uh, but uh, official, this is the official ending of the workshop. Thank you very much. <laughs>